And for you, by Wrangler, a legend in jeans, made in the USA. And by Burger King. This is a Burger King town. We know how burgers should be. Hello again, everyone, from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. We're going to watch the Cleveland Browns tonight go against the Miami Dolphins. We are also going to watch a lot of football players because, let's face it, this is the second pregame of the preseason game of the year, and both teams are hovering right around 90 on the roster. Uh, that will change dramatically by Tuesday when the league rules call for each team to get down to 60. Oh, as a matter of fact, all teams around the league getting down to 60 players, so there will be a lot of disappointment, a lot of heartbreak between now and Tuesday. Two of the players we are going to watch tonight, however, are outstanding. They will be around for the season. They will be impressive, we feel. Let's take a look at young Bernie Kozar, who played his collegiate football right here in the Orange Bowl and played it in a spectacular fashion. There he is. He decided to forego the last two years of his career to become a professional. Had he still been with Miami, he probably would be starting and being contested by Vinny Testaverde, the quarterback for Miami now. And here is his counterpart tonight, the incredible Dan Marino, and he is healthy after having orthoscopic surgery once again on his left knee during the offseason. He has looked great in training camp, 5,000 yards. That was back in 1984. He was the only quarterback in the NFL to pass for over 4,000 last year. Just incredible. Nearly 10,000 yards in two years, 68 touchdowns, and, well, it's hard to figure what is ahead for this young man. I mentioned a lot of players were playing tonight, and that, of course, makes me think of Al Michaels, my colleague in the booth. <laughs> Al, you're going to be busy once again tonight. A couple more of these games, and I'll never again complain about motorcycles on ice in Czechoslovakia. Well, back and to I, the 45-man roster. I can't roster. wait till we get down there. But at least there is one household name you can always count on when you come to Miami, and that man's name is Don Shula. Don Shula is in his 17th year as the head coach of the Dolphins and his 24th year as a head coach overall. Remember, he was with the Baltimore Colts before that. He is a resourceful coach, perhaps the most resourceful. He does not get a lot of sympathy these days. He has a lot of injuries as far as the offensive line is concerned. He's had some problems defensively. The Dolphins have had a lot of problems in the past protecting against the rush. But Don Shula always seems to find a way to win because in his 23 seasons as a head coach, he has had only one losing year. And there is Marty Schottenheimer, who took over for Sam Ritigliano. During the 1984 season, last year his first full year at the helm, and the Browns have the luxury of being in the NFL's weakest division, the AFC Central. Last year they played 500 ball, they were 8-8, eight eight, but that was good enough to take the title. And then, of course, they came within a couple of minutes of going to the AFC Championship game. And finally, they lost 24-21 to to Miami. Miami subsequently upset by New England for the AFC title. So we're ready to go as the Cleveland Browns will kick off at the Orange Bowl. And Uwe von Schumann, who spent so many years here in Miami and now is trying to win a job at Cleveland, though to win the job there, he has to beat out Matt Barr, and that's not likely. And von Schumann is greeted with that reception. So as he returns to the scene of some of his greatest triumphs and some of his greatest foibles, as that reaction would indicate, will kick off. And Lorenzo Hampton is back deep with Kevin Wyatt. Hampton, number 27, in his second year. Shula hopeful that he can be the breakaway back the Dolphins so desperately need to help balance the attack. And Wyatt, a rookie out of Arkansas. So here we go from the Orange Bowl as the kick is taken at the four-yard line by Hampton, who comes straight up the middle. Hampton hit at the 20, and down he goes at the 21-yard line. And here comes Marino, who did not play last week in the Dolphins' exhibition opener at Minnesota. 4,137 yards last season, three great years, with Hampton and Davenport starting at the running back spots. Duper and Clayton are the wideouts. And there is the offensive line with Dwight Stevenson, the anchor in the middle. But it's been a line decimated, as we say, by injuries in training camp and last week at Minnesota. Dolphins at the 20-yard line, first and 10, as Marino turns and gives the ball to Davenport, who last year scored two touchdowns against the Browns in that playoff game as the Dolphins came from behind. Golick, the recent signee, the nose tackle in the three-man front. And then the linebackers, and they are still minus Chip Banks, who is holding out, has not signed this contract. But Weathers, Johnson, Cousineau, and Matthews are a formidable foursome. And Chris Rockins is the man trying to take the place of the late Don Rogers in the defensive backfield. Second down, six. Just outside the 25-yard line, and Marino protected well, puts it up, and it's incomplete. Out at the 30-yard line is Dan Johnson. 
was double covered on the play. Eddie Johnson among those on top of him, and it's third down and six. Now well, you talked about the problems for the offensive line of the Miami Dolphins. They actually had problems a year ago, and yet with Marino able to gun the ball like he can, and believe me, no one can get rid of it as fast as he can. They gave up the fewest sacks offensively of any team in the NFL, and they are hurting. John Giesler is missing, Stan Clark, Mark Denner, Jeff Taze. They're trying to get by in the second offensive line that they would bring on the field. None of them were even with the Dolphins a year ago. Third and six, Nat Moore is in the game as Marino operates from the shotgun, and also Nathan is in. He sends Tony out into the pattern. A flag goes down, and the pass is complete on the far side to Mark Clayton, number 83, but a marker down at the 23-yard line. Fred Wyant is the referee. An illegal motion against Miami, so that will nullify what would have been the first first down of the game. It nullified it, but... You got to look at Dan Marino at the finest. He held it to the last possible moment, picked up the break on Clayton, and just fired that thing on a string. So the ball comes back to the 21-yard line. Third down, 11 for Miami. You know, Marino figures to play about half the game tonight. And uh, that's to with Bernie Kosar. Uh, Marty Schottenheimer says he'd like to take him through a couple of series even in the third quarter because he has a new offense. That's what they're calling it under Indy and Ponte, the new offensive coordinator. They both were at the Giants back in the 70s, so they're very familiar with each other. And they give it to Nathan on third and 11, and Tony has no room at all as the Browns smell it out, and Chris Rockins comes up from the free safety spot to drop him. And so Miami will be forced to punt, and Reggie Roby comes into the game with Clarence Weathers dropping back deep. Roby last year led the NFL, or second in the NFL, tops in the conference in punting, 43-7, but the net average only 32.7, 12th in the league, with Weathers back deep. That was another thing they overcame last week here in the Dolphins. They did not have very good special teams. This one will be blocked. And it's blocked. And at the 27-yard line, there's a scramble, but it's all academic because Cleveland's going to get the ball anyway. As Al Gross, number 27, the starting strong safety and a member of the special teams, blocks the kick. You watch him. He'll come from the left side. Roby just kind of casual there. The block missed right there. And Roby, who takes a little bit of time getting it away, did not have nearly enough time to get that one off. Take a look at it again. And slipping the block is Al Gross, number 27. And... That was Brzezinski, the linebacker, trying to pick him up. He did not do the job, and Cleveland will have good field position inside the 28-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. And so Bernie Kozar, had he stayed in school, this would have been Kozar's home stadium this year. He'd have been a senior at Miami. He was redshirted one year, graduated, opted to sign with Cleveland, and here he comes back home, in a sense in an enemy uniform as he gives it to Kevin Mack for a gain of about five. It'll be second down and five. So Bernie Kozar, who played only two series last week and early in the game against Buffalo with Buffalo blitzing to Cleveland's surprise on the first series, he was sacked three times overall. Liner and Mack, the 2,000-yard backs. Greer out of Canada with Langhorn and Newsom, the great tight end with Bolden, Farron, Babb in the middle, Fike and Cody Rising, the right tackle. Second and five from the 23. Kozar with Biner staying in the block finds Newsom. Ozzie Newsom hit hard by Lyle Blackwood, but enough for a first down. It's first down. Cleveland at the Miami 11. The great one. Ozzie Newsom, he's led all the NFL receivers since 1981. He holds on to it. He knows he's going to get popped here, but good protection for Kozar. He rifles it. Looked a little like Dan Marino on that release right on the string. And Newsom holds on to it, gets hammered really hard. Lyle Blackwood of the Bruise Brothers puts the hit on, but Newsom holds on first down the Browns. First and ten from just outside the ten. Biner to the outside. 
and out of bounds at the five-yard line. Run out by the Bruce brothers, Glenn and Lyle Blackwood. It'll be second down and five. The Dolphins with more. Bob Baumhauer is playing for the first time since the Super Bowl in Palo Alto. He was hurt all of last year in Bo Camper. Brzezinski ship, Ockerdahl is their second-round draft choice, and Hugh Green, who came over from Tampa last year, and then Lankford, Judson, and the Blackwood brothers in the backfield. They have great plans for John Offerdahl, their second-round draft pick out of Western Michigan. We'll talk about him later. He's starting. He's calling the defenses. Fine prospect. Second and five. They can get a first down without getting the touchdown, and it's Kevin Mack finding no room in the middle. So third and a long three, and the crowd responds because the PA announcer has just told them that Bob Baumhauer was the man who made the tackle. So that's the response he gets upon his return. He hurt his left knee, actually, in early in the 84 season, and he played right through it, Al, as you mentioned, his last game being the Super Bowl, and afterwards, the surgery, they discovered that he was a lot worse than they thought. He set out all of last year and then had surgery again after last year, and this is his first real test, and he's a veteran, a pro bowler, but you better believe he's a little nervous right at this moment. On third down and four, Kozar protected, lofting it too deep. Harry Green was the... Greer was the intended receiver. He is the youngster that came from the Los Angeles Rams but had a fabulous career up in Canada, and they expect great things from him, and we're going to see the field goal unit. And Von Schaumann gets that response that you're hearing for the second time in a couple of minutes, the same response he got on the kickoff. He was popping off a little this week. He wasn't happy about being back here. said that Don Shula didn't give him a chance to even compete with Claude Raviz a year ago. He really had a tough time in, in 1984. 9 of 19. 21-yard field goal attempt is good. And so with 11.04 to go in the first quarter, the Browns lead the Dolphins in the Orange Bowl 3-0. That was the first time, I suppose, in history that Von Schaumann has kicked a field goal in the Orange Bowl, and it hasn't meant three points for Miami. I mentioned in 84 he had a tough year, 9 of 19, and we were down here doing a couple of games when they didn't even let him try to kick a field goal. He was having that kind of year, and then they brought in Fod Raviz from Tennessee as a seventh-round draft pick. You knew that Von Chalman was gone a year ago because Don Shula didn't even have him work, didn't have him kicking in preseason. He missed all of last year, and now he's trying to make it with the Browns. The Browns would like to see him in there because he is a longer kicker than Barr. Barr's best field goal ever was 50 yards, and Von Chalman can kick much farther than that. He's good on kickoffs. Well, his first kick went down to the five, and this one's a beauty because it pins Hampton at the goal line in the corner. He comes out past the 15 and breaks a tackle. And then is run out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And the Dolphins will start from there. If you're just picking us up, Miami and Cleveland. Miami coming off a loss last week at Minnesota, 30-16. to The Browns, meanwhile, beat the Bills 19-17 at Cleveland for each club the second of four preseason games. Miami heading for its opener at San Diego, and there's a flag down on the kickoff as we get the call from Wyatt. His mic is not working, but you can detect the offside call against Cleveland, and Miami has opted to have the Browns kick again. Now, you all know about Herschel Walker and the fact that he has signed with the Dallas Cowboys, and we'll be taking a look at Dallas next week, next Friday, against Pittsburgh. And Walker will be with us live at halftime from his home in New Jersey. Just prior to reporting, I suppose he's going to fly out tomorrow and uh, join the Cowboys, though not play in their game against the Raiders. Put Tony Dorsett in a bit of a sniff, too, didn't mm -hmm. he? Imagine those two in the same backfield. Al Landry's going to figure it out. I'll never know, but uh, it would be impressive, not to mention expensive. Well, I talked about Shula not getting any sympathy, and Landry's not going to get any either from the other coaches. This is great. The two greatest coaches in terms of winning behind George Hallis, Tom Landry and Don Shula, two players who played were really contemporaries, or at least overlapped. Two of them, both slow defensive backs. And here they are with the second and the third best record in terms of winning. <laughs> NFL. And you forget about Shula being so young. He's still 56 years old. He was a head coach at the age of 33. And so Don could be around for many more years. And this kick is a short one. And goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line. 
So the Browns offside originally, and the crowd a mock cheer for Von Schaumann, and they'll bring it back again. Four and a half minutes into the game at the Orange Bowl on a steamy night. Temperature today up near 90 and tonight still in the mid 80s and humid. And as Frank mentioned, the threat of rain. They had some showers here, isolated showers this afternoon, and we may have some tonight. Al, could I ask you, can you hear me? I certainly can, sir. Well, isn't it good? We're back functioning again. All right. It does Schaumann. help. I'll tell you, he would want anything to happen other than what's just happened. He came in here trying to win a job, and he really is on the line. Uh, again, he was out all last year, and kickers are, well, kickers are a little different. They really are. Many of them, of course, carrying green cards, but they are different in the sense that they go out there occasionally with everything on the line, and they look in that huddle, and guys are bleeding all over the place, and they have worked and worked and worked to get the ball down there where they can win a football game. They have a clean uniform on. They miss it, and it does something to their heads. I firmly believe it really does. Well, Von Schaumann's doing a little work in here because it's the third time he's kicked off. After the penalty and the kick out of bounds, he kicks off from the 25-yard line. And this one is fielded at the 15 by Hampton. Up past the 20, the 25. And stopped at the 32-yard line, and another marker goes down after the tackle. Now we might also mention that the NFL, as we see the holding call against Miami, mentioned that the NFL has, they have their videotape toys here tonight. Tony Viteri, one holding of the NFL assistant 90. supervisors. First down. Of the officials under Art McNally is here, along with Al Ward, the assistant to the president of the AFC. And, of course, the umpire, Bob Boylston, is wearing the little buzzer down there if they want to take a look and maybe override a call. Well, we'll see if we have any indisputable visual evidence, as the saying goes, tonight. After the penalty, the holding call. The holding against Andy Hindle. It's Miami from the 20-yard line. Marino throwing over the middle to Hampton. He's out past the 30 to the 32-yard line. Stopped by Tom Cousineau, the linebacker. Hampton is going to get nothing but better. He came up as a number one draft pick a year ago out of... Florida, and he is an exceptional athlete. He is really a good receiver. Now, they have Tony Nathan, number 22, but they can use Hampton the same way. A good heady back out of the backfield, splits the linebackers right there, gets up, gets the first down out of the 32-yard line. He is going to improve with each game. Hampton and Davenport are the split backs on first down from the 32-yard line. It's Davenport who last year was their short yardage specialist, tripped up behind the line of scrimmage, tripped on his own man, Roy Foster, the guard. We'll and see. Camp in on the stop. And a typical Miami Dolphin change in the office. They bring in Tony Nathan. Let's take a look at, at uh, Davenport. Gets right behind Foster. Gets in a little tight on him. He could have bellied back and taken it around Foster uh, as the penetration was there. Foster had no choice, but... As I mentioned, Tony Nathan, who is a great receiver out of the backfield, he means more to this Miami Dolphins, uh, Dolphin offense than perhaps he gets the credit for. He gets the short stuff. The two marks get the deep stuff. On second down and 13, it's Tony Nathan. Nathan in his eighth year out of Alabama. The Dolphins, so pass-oriented, one of the things that Shula would like to do, and it's not that Nathan is not the answer, but he's been around a while. I know what he can do. He's a fine receiver. He'll do just so much for you on the ground, as Frank mentioned earlier with Lorenzo Hampton, if he can have a big year, if they can find that back, if Davenport can have a big year and develop more balance in that offense, the Dolphins will be very tough to beat again. They're going to be tough to beat at any time. Mm -hmm. They really, even with the bad numbers statistically, they have defensively, as you mentioned at the top of the show, Don Shula somehow figures out a way to get it done. Try a shotgun now for Marina. Third down and 10 from the 32-yard line. Marina with the protection starting to break down, and he goes down to the 28-yard line. The receiver's covered, and finally it was Malone. Ralph Malone, number 90, a rookie trying to win a job. He's from Georgia Tech who sacks Marino. He comes in on that four-down lineman, and Marty Schottenheimer got the kind of 
action he wanted out of that, a little pass rush. However, Marino really had the time to get rid of that. You can credit just good coverage to a fine defensive secondary headed by Miniford and the other cornerback, Dixon. They're good back there, and they like Rockins. Clarence Weathers back to receive Reggie Roby's kick, a wow. prototypical Roby kick, high and very deep and taken at the 15 and slipping down at the 24-yard line after a nine-yard run back is Weathers. You know, that might be why they had that 13.7 return against them last year. That ball was kicked a long way, but it also was uncharacteristically low, and that's the kind you run back. Round the world through the heat. Cleveland on top, 3-0. The Cleveland field goal by Uwe von Schaman set up on the block punt. And now the Browns have the ball at their own 25-yard line with eight minutes remaining in the first quarter. Kevin Mack, number 34, the sole running back in this set with Ernest Biner on the outside, number 44. And starting in motion... Reggie Langhorn across the line before the snap. You saw the move, and let's talk briefly about the new offense that they're talking in Cleveland. Last year, they were basically a ground game with Mack and Viner, both going over 1,000 yards. See the illegal motion uh, indicated against the Browns, but they have changed considerably, and Marty Schottenheimer has brought in a friend, a colleague, an opponent that he's known for many years, and it's Mindy motion, and Marty. Number 34. First that down. Mack illegally in motion, but Mindy... And Fonte was with Marty Schottenheimer with the Giants for a couple of years back in the late 70s. And later he coached the offense for the Cincinnati Bengals. And when they went to the Super Bowl after the 81 season with Collinsworth and Curtis and Ross, Dan Ross the tight end, they were coached by Infante, their offensive unit. And that's what they'd like to duplicate a little bit here in Cleveland. On first and 15, it's Mac who a couple of years ago was playing in the USFL with the LA Express, and last year over 1,000 yards, and there is in front of I'm wondering, how much do you show? You put in a new offense, but how much do you really want to show in preseason? Well, you can't really hide it. You have to get your quarterback coordinated with the receivers, and it is an entirely different system they have. The receivers have to be a little cerebral in this type of offense. They have to read with the quarterback. They have to read the zone. If it's a zone, you pull up in a certain area, much like San Diego does. If it's man for man, you keep going on your routes on the various patterns, and you have got to have the timing, so they have got to work together, and they have to work together a lot, and we're going to see a lot of Kozar tonight. On second and ten, fake to Biner. A lot of time for Kozar. Lost the pass, and it's incomplete, intended for Kevin Mack who couldn't one-hand it. Jackie Shipp, the linebacker, back there with Mack. So it'll be third down and ten. Kozar, I think, was legitimately unhappy a year ago. He wanted to throw the ball a little bit. He was 124 out of 248, 50% when he did it. Yeah, but again, he basically was running the football, and there are only a couple of teams that threw fewer passes. And... Kozar was unhappy. He complained about it, but nevertheless, he is back in there now with, I think, the kind of offense he wants to go with, and that basically is going to be an offense much like it was in Cincinnati in 81 and now in San Diego. And that Bengal team went to the Super Bowl. Third down and 10 as Kozar steps up, throws, and it's incomplete, intended for Ozzie Newsom on the far side, and another penalty flag is down. Just a little while by Kozar there. He has some gun, though. And it's holding against Cleveland. Holding number 63, the prime fourth down. Cody Risen guilty of holding, and with the incompletion, it's fourth down, so the penalty is declined, and the Browns will kick. That's Kevin Wyatt standing back at his own 35-yard line. Oh, that's a good punt. Wyatt backs up, takes it at the 27, comes out past the 30, and he is stopped at the 35. So Jeff Gossett with a good kick to run back to the 35-yard line after a 48-yard punt. Still 3-0 Cleveland, first period. Head coach Marty Schottenheimer and his offensive coordinator, Lindy Infante. So the offense still trying to get on track for Cleveland as Miami takes over offensively. But the Browns have a 3-0 lead with six minutes and 41 seconds to go in the first quarter. Lots of excitement thus far. <laughs> Lots of penalties thus far. <laughs> Stick around, we have a couple of real shotguns down there in arms, Gozar and Moreno. Moreno looks it over, he's changing that off right now. First down from the 35-yard line, and it's Hampton for a gain of seven. 
about Marino in Miami, so passing oriented. Marino in his three years has had 16 games in which he has thrown for 300 or more yards, and the Dolphins are 13 and three. Now you might say, well, what's so unusual about that? Do you know that most quarterbacks over the past years, and it can be proven statistically, who have 300-yard games have lost more than 50% of their games. From the 42-yard line, it's Hampton again, picking up the first down as he barrels out to the 43-yard line. The reasoning, of course, is that a lot of quarterbacks whose teams fall behind begin to play catch-up. So you pick up the paper the next day and you say, well, you know, Joe Jones, look at him, he had a tremendous day, 363 yards. How'd they lose? Well, they lost because all they did was play catch-up. And there have been rumors of those who got way behind and decided they were going to work on their stats and the contract mm -hmm. for next year. So you we, saw Hampton there. I, I, tell you, I really like the way he runs. He doesn't look like he's getting that kind of yardage. He got seven, he got a quick six, gets the first down out close to midfield. Good running backs make it look so easy. They sometimes don't get the claim they should get. From the 48, Davenport takes the ball to the 50-yard line, and Tom Cousino makes the tackle. Cousino, three years in the Canadian Football League. Montreal, after a fine career at Ohio State, at the age of 29, now in his fifth year with the Cleveland Browns. Well, they gave up a bundle to get him, just like they gave up a bundle to get Kozar. When they picked up Kozar, they gave away four draft picks. Two of them were number ones. And our Modell wants something, he goes and gets it. On second and eight, Hampton. That's just good running. Exploits the opening and should have the first down. We'll see where they spot it. And he appears to have it at the 42-yard line. The linebacker, Anthony Griggs, <laughs> making the stop. You know what he can do that other backs can't, or a lot of backs can't, is that plant that foot and not lose any speed at all. He watched the left foot plant. Cuts the brakes it inside. And he actually accelerates out of that cut. Makes it look so easy. It's a good block over on the left side. Out there in front of him is Davenport. Reads it well. Foster with a good block, number 61. Another first down, and Hampton doing all the work. First and 10 from the 41. Marino, a lot of time going deep over the middle. Great and play. It is picked off at the three yard line, intended for Johnson. And Chris Rockins, number 37, the free safety. A lot of pressure on Rockins. You mentioned Al, he's coming in following the tragic death of Don Rogers from cocaine abuse, June 22nd. Chris Rockins playing in the spot where Don Rogers played so well. That was a great interception. Marino. I think felt he had it. It was just went up. Rockins just went up and comes down literally with one hand right there. Beautiful. Tried to get something more out of it, but they'll mark it down inside the three yard line. That was a great effort. Marino had his man, too, by the way, Dan Johnson. So the Browns pin deep, start from the two, 357 to go. First quarter, Cleveland on top, 3 0. Kozar to throw, and throwing deep and incomplete. Good coverage by McNeil over there, and this is what they hope they're going to get defensively. There's a look at Glenn Blackwood. He was he was in there with it, too, but Don McNeil was stride for stride with him. And McNeil, of course, has been hurt most of his career, but he came back last year, and they hope they can get a full season out of him because he could be a Pro Bowl cornerback. His sixth year out of Alabama, but he has missed a season with an Achilles. He missed a season with an ankle injury. He's broken fibula, I believe. But if they keep him healthy, he'll make a difference defensively. Second and ten Browns from the two-yard line. Mack has Danger. to get out of the end zone. Almost got trapped. Glenn Blackwood comes up to make the tackle. That's a dangerous call down there. It's hard to take it wide and run parallel in your own end zone. Anything could happen. They could be coming with a blitz, a safety blitz, and you're going to give up two right on the spot. Take it up straight, at least inside tackle to tackle. Glenn pretty much assured of maintaining his starting role here. A different story, though, with Lyle, his brother. Of course, he lost his job, really. Lyle did uh, last year to Bud Brown, who was on the sidelines uh, on a pair of crutches. And that's why Lyle is in the starting lineup tonight. Brown hurt last week against Minnesota. Third down, nine, Cleveland from the three. 
Four down line in Miami. They'll try to pressure Kozar. Over the middle and out to the 19 yard line as Kozar completes it to Langhorn for the first down. And McNeil making the stop. I tell you, that's what Don Shula, I know, it just gnashes his teeth over something like that. Kozar had all the time he wanted to get rid of that ball. There are four down linemen pressuring. Kozar standing there, waiting till the receiver uncovers. And not only does he get the completion, he gets the first down. And instead of punting from their own end zone, giving the ball to Miami probably somewhere around their own 40-yard line, now all of a sudden the Browns are out where they can operate again. And what it is, they were not getting the pass rush, and they didn't get it last year defensively in the league. They were... 22nd against the pass, and you can see why. Kevin Mack picks up five, takes it out to the 24-yard line. Mack and Viner each over 1,000 yards, only the third time in history that you've had 2,000-yard rushers on the same team. First time it happened was here in 1972, the Dolphins' perfect season with Larry Zaka and Mercury Morris, and the only other time, 76, the Pittsburgh Steelers with Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer. I'll make you a bet. If Wendell Tyler and Roger Craig at the 49ers stay healthy, mm -hmm. you'll see it again. <laughs> On second and five, Viner in motion, and Mack gets the handoff, and Mack picks up a couple as he gets to the 27, and there is John Offerdahl, Miami's top draft choice. They got him in the second round. Out of Western Michigan. He is also calling the defenses out there. He's coming out right now as they bring in the short yardage defense. But here he is. They really are high on this youngster. They figure he'll be a starter. He'll be calling the defenses. He'll be around for a long time to come. And he might free up Hugh Green on the outside to do what he does best, and that is pressure the passer. Don Shula wants to get some kind of pressure on the passer, and Hugh Green would be the logical place to get the blitz from. Betters, of course, the best pass rushing defensive end. He's a holdout. Wide open. Biner has the first down down the sidelines, and Biner breaks a couple of tackles. Biner, the 30, the 20, and run out of bounds inside the 10-yard line by Lyle Blackwood, and that's one difference in this offense. Biner, who gained over 1,000 last year, in all likelihood will not this year, but he'll probably get the ball very much through the air. Blitz was on. His talents that way. Blitz was on. It was a safety blitz. There was no one there to pick up Biner. Somebody blew the coverage. You either had to get out of that blitz and get back on him. Looked like he was almost out of bounds, but then Biner, at 215 pounds, puts on a pretty good show of speed here. And look at him change the ball. He did that to keep the ball away from Lyle Blackwood, who came up on the inside. They're going to, however, bring the whole thing back, and could it be that he did step out of bounds? Good effort by Biner. Bad defensive effort on the Dolphins. He caught him right there. He did step out of bounds. I wonder if it... I wonder if the NFL did that with their new I, toy I'm just I'm wondering the same thing, and here's Wyant's response to it. He'll tell us. The runner stepped out of bounds. First down. Oh, well, he maybe will. he won't tell us. Well, we'll try and find out for you. Tony Vitara, of course, is overlooking that for the NFL. I think he did, and I think that's exactly what happened. I bet they picked it up. Yeah, but is that indisputable visual evidence? That's the question. Oh, don't don't be so sticky. Mm. <laughs> if they have a new toy, let them play. It, it was, was not, not from the booth. That's what we understand. It was called on the field, not from the booth. It's still a first down as he gets it out to his own 40-yard line, and Kozar off the play fake has a lot of time and throws incomplete. Intended for the double-covered Terry Greer, number 80, second down. It, it's a good point there, Frank, because we talk about, again, that term, and you're going to be hearing a lot about indisputable visual evidence. Now, was that it, or was it not? Yeah, it depends on whether you took the points or gave the points. <laughs> That's indisputable. You're going to get an argument. No way. You're going to get arguments over this little machine. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be very careful and judicious in how they use it. And they had better be. There's a lot of opposition to it as well as support. Second down and 10 from the 40-yard line. Mack, no room at all, and he is pushed back. Jackie Ship, number 50, making the stop. 
Zachy Ship was a first round draft pick out of Oklahoma a couple of years ago. Plays the run really strong. The Dolphins really get their best run support over on that left side from Brzezinski. Brzezinski came from the Rams a few years ago and they took an all pro linebacker by Kim Bocamper and moved him to defensive end to make room for Brzezinski. They're tough against the run on the strong side and most teams run to the strong side to the right side and that's where you need the support against the run and they have it there in Ship and Brzezinski. But they need is some pass pressure and that's what Don Shula is primarily looking for going into this season. He may not get away with it unless he gets some kind of pass pressure. He won't get away with it I'm sure like he did last year. Three nothing Cleveland as we go to the second quarter. Hi this is Jerry Lewis for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And these are some of my kids visiting the world famous Budweiser Clydesdales. This year, once again, Anheuser-Busch is pledging over $2 million to muscular dystrophy. So look for these displays wherever you buy Bud and Bud Light. It's your chance to join the fight against muscular dystrophy. And thank you from all of my kids. He's Don Shula. The winningest coach in the NFL, admired and respected by millions. Sure, winning is important on the field, but winning is also important in the home, in the community. The National Football League is concerned not only about professional football, but they're also concerned about you and I in the community. National Football League. minutes gone we start the second period Cleveland on top three nothing and this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Kellogg's all brand cereal Cleveland has the ball at its own 43 yard line as we start the second quarter it's third down and eight as Kozar retreats and throws and it is short of the first down as Ozzie Newsom makes the catch at the 49 yard line but Newsom who was over the 50 had to come back to make the catch and as a consequence is shy of the first stop by Lyle Blackwood and Donovan Rose and Newsom is very slow getting up that was just good coverage Newsom took his man deep and I believe it was Glenn Blackwood gave a good drive on him but Blackwood stayed right with him and read it pretty well and Newsom had to come back to prevent possible interception. You know, there are 90 players or so on either team, and quite frankly, I'll tell you, most of them don't want to be here tonight. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> They're working. They are going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth down in inches, just shy of the 50-yard line. They pitch it back to Biner, who gets the block from Mack, has the first down, and gets to the 46-yard line, and Offerdahl makes the stop. So Schottenheimer going for it early in the second period, and the Browns have it at the Miami 46-yard line. They might have a new offense, but they remember last year, a couple of thousand yard gainers back there. Good hard running by Ernest Beiner. Gets good blocking up front. Big hit there by Kevin Mack leading it and gets the first down. You can do that when you have good strong running and even though they're trying to get more into the passing game, they still can go back to it with these two big backs and some fine blocking up front over on Cody Rising's side. Now Beiner lines up on the outside. Langhorn in motion. And Kozar with a penalty flag thrown at the line of scrimmage completes it to Biner who takes it to the 40 yard line. Pick up a five and a marker down at the 46. And again illegal motion. First game we did the first preseason game in Canton. And it was relatively penalty free New England and St. Louis looked like they'd been in camp about six Illegal weeks. Motion, number 88 first down. But tonight flags galore. They're still on two a day and in the trade you call it two a day legs. These guys are hurt and the spring hasn't come back. They're playing on natural turf here and that's that's a little softer and the legs have really got to get back and they won't come back really until you get off the two a day workouts and you're going to get a lot of mistakes you're going to get a lot of miscounts a lot of illegal motions and we're getting that tonight first and 15 it's also Mac, game to three it's also very warm and these these players quite frankly the veterans who are here they that are very secure in their position as we look at the uneventful stats from the first quarter the ones who are going to make the ball club, they are going through the motions, quite frankly. A, the players who are marginal on the line or have maybe some deep hopes of making a team, well, they are going to play it in a different way. 
consequently what you get is almost a game going in two different directions. The veterans kind of getting through and the youngsters trying to make a make their way or a veteran trying to hold on. They're playing at full speed. Second and 11 from the 46. Kozar sidearms it and oh. nearly intercepted at the 40-yard line. Bob Brudzinski, who became a new daddy for the second time on Monday, got a hand on it. The pass intended for Travis Tucker. Third down and 11. Brudzinski had the big paw on it. Kozar trying to throw back across the field. That's really a dangerous move, no matter who you are. And Kozar moving to the right could really could get could get no snap on it at all. Uh, just about had that one picked off. Those are 410 now, 49 yards. He's looking over third and long. And we'll see four down linemen, I'm pretty sure, from the Dolphins. And they drop into it. They look like they're going to come. From the 46, those are lofting it and batted away at the 28 yard line by Judson, intended for Terry Greer. Good play by Judson, but it was. Langford, who came on the blitz and was right in Kozar's face, made him hurry the toss. Otherwise, we might have had a big gainer. Let's take a look. Good coverage now by Judson. And the receiver is Greer. But right about there, at this point, Langford is right in Kozar's face. He had to throw the ball. So the Browns to kick. Jeff Gossett. It was Stan Talley who was trying to win a job kicking last week. But Gossett in there tonight, the Browns' regular punter, and he angles it for the far side. And out of bounds near the 10-yard line. As they line it up, they will spot it at the 13, and the Dolphins will take over there with 11.57 to play in the half. It's tomorrow. It's warm in Miami. Hot. Been an uneventful 18 minutes in this one thus far. A block punt setting up the only scoring in the game. An Uwe von Schaumann field goal early on. 3-0 Cleveland as Miami takes over at its own 13-yard line. And so Marino, who didn't play last week, he's done all the way thus far tonight. He's one out of three. Starts this drive from his own 13-yard line. And gives it to Hampton. Hampton off the pile, the 30. Hampton to the 50-yard line. He's out in front, and Lorenzo Hampton. There are no flags. Inside the 10 for the touchdown. 87 yards, and it was an athletic maneuver at the line of scrimmage. We talked about the man being a good athlete early on. He didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He bounced off, and he put on a tremendous display of speed. And the ball is heavy. Hanford Dixon, a defensive cornerback, had the angle on him. He couldn't catch him. Once again, he bangs into his own man right here. Good defensive effort there on the part of Cleveland. Steps to the outside. Now, at this point, Dixon has an angle on him. He should have caught him. This is just a great effort. And also running there is Mark Duper. That's just great effort. You know, Shula's got to be happy as this youngster, Lorenzo Hampton, develops. That's what he wants, the breakaway back as Ravise's extra point attempt is good. So Hampton, an 87-yard touchdown run, 11.42 to go in the half, and Miami has taken the lead. It has warmed up, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Quality. If this were the regular season, that would have been a Dolphin record. Their longest touchdown run in history, 77 yards by Leroy Harris in 1977. And Hampton here in a preseason game, an 87-yard run. Last year, his longest run was 15 yards. There will be a lot of long runs for this youngster if he stays healthy. He's just really getting into it. Reggie Roby will do the kicking off. As Shula utilizes him in this role right now. That's a straightaway move to the ball. And short, not very good. And fields it up at the... 15-yard line by Alton Alexis, the wide receiver. Another penalty flag is thrown as the tackle is made out at the 25-yard line. Wyan and his crew, very busy tonight. Let's take a look at Lorenzo Hampton once again. Bangs right into his left guard, Foster. 
nowhere there. Steps to the outside. Turns on the speed. Runs like a sprinter. He, look at Mark Duper, who was a sprinter. Get in front of it. And Dixon never had a chance, even though he had quite an angle on it. Penalty against the Browns moves the ball back to the 14-yard line. Bernie Kozar has gone all the way. Kozar figures to play the whole first half and maybe a series of two in the third quarter. Finer is now wide to the left with Mack, the sole running back, on first down. It's a new offensive look. And he looks for Biner. Incomplete. And that's the the move by Biner. Now, had they been in a man for man, he probably would have taken this somewhere else. Uh, maybe he should have taken it somewhere else. He reads it right there. And that's Oferdahl, the rookie, and he gets right in between Oferdahl and Lyle Blackwood. He probably should have pulled that up maybe a little early. It's hard to say, but that's what they're trying to do with their new offense. And you had the Cincinnati look there, the single back. You had the receivers moving uh, around on the field just as they did. And Infante, and they still do, when Infante was with them in, back in 81. Well, he went to Biner a lot last year. He caught 45 passes, figured to go to him a lot again this year. He's wide to the left. As Kozar hands the ball off, Kevin Mack is stopped at the 15-yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Interesting, in talking to Marty Schottenheimer, he said the key to your offense that they'd like to work this year is your tight end. And, of course, in 81, they had a great tight end in Cincinnati when he was coaching there, and Dan Ross. They also had Isaac Curtis and Chris Collingsworth, and they do have a great tight end. Many will argue with that he is the best, and that would, of course, be Ozzie Newsom. Led all the receivers over the past five years in reception, and is the all-time holder of the NFL record for reception for a tight end. On third and eight, Kozar over the middle, tipped and almost caught and then batted away again. Clarence Weathers, is the intended receiver, but it was tipped. Paul Lankford, number 44, the cornerback, getting a hand on it. He's got a lot of confidence, Bernie Kozar. He tried to plop this in there in between two defenders. There's Lankford. He almost got away with it as Lankford just turned around and just didn't see it. There it is again. He liked that out of a quarterback. He was going to squeeze that in there. He believed in himself, and that's what you have to have from a quarterback. You see, the man who does that more than anyone else in pro football today is Dan Marino. And I get a kind of a feeling that Kozar is going to be that kind of a quarterback, and there is a very bad punt. Gossett off the side of his foot. Jeff Gossett, who had such a bad day in the playoffs last year, leading to Miami's comeback. And so at 10-29, Remaining in the first half, Miami takes over in Cleveland territory at the 30. 15-yard punt. 15-yard punt. Mid-season form in Miami for this second preseason game for both teams. Cleveland coming off a victory last week against Buffalo. Miami losing to Minnesota. And Miami, after the 15-yard gossip punt, takes over at the Cleveland 30. Dolphins on top, 7-3. to three. Dan Marino on first and 10 from the 30-yard line. Hampton again. Turns the corner and picks up nine. Bumped out of bounds, shy of the first at the 21-yard line by Tom Cousineau and Felix Wright. I tell you, Hampton just turned that corner with uh, everyone in front of him. Ronnie Lee was there, Foster was there, and no penetration at all. Defense will be over on the left side, and we're going to look forward to being... And Dallas next Friday night, Herschel Walker, maybe. At least he'll be in a Cowboy uniform. And then our opening game, September the 8th, that should be something. The Giants and the Cowboys. Giants, I know, are improved. The Cowboys have got to be improved with the Herschel Walker. No matter how they use him in tandem with Tony Dorsett or if they just play it separately. On second and one, Marino incomplete. Crowd wants a marker intended for Duper. They got one. And Minifield... Covering a little too adroitly. Benefield's a little bit upset. He they have a little more leeway in what they can do, but he's got his hand all over him. Almost took his wardrobe off there. <laughs> and the official right on top of that one. You can see the jersey almost ripped it. 
little aggressive by Minifield. Number 31, first down. At the 16 now for Miami. Talked to several of the Dolphins yesterday. They would ask me if I could just say hello to Lee Monica. She's a mother of Bob Monica, their equipment manager. She's in a hospital up in New Jersey, St. Boniface Hospital, and recovering from surgery. So they just wanted to send along their very best. The Dolphins are deft at getting it in once they're inside the 20 yard line. Lewis, Lewis fumble here at the 16 yard line. And Cleveland does have it. And so the Dolphins, unable to take advantage of the poor punt, getting the call on the penalty, and then fumbling as Davenport costs it up. And Anthony Griggs comes up with the football number 53. The linebacker gives Cleveland possession. Griggs, who came over in a deal with the Philadelphia Eagles, 10-11 to go now in the first half. This came out. The big hand reached in there, pulled it out. How to tuck that thing away when you get in the traffic, and Riggs was right there, and Browns bring it up. Cleveland at the 15-yard line, first and 10. You know, for a moment, I thought I was doing play-by-play, -play, and I was waiting for you to do the replay. <laughs> Pavlov's dog. Good game by Biner as he takes it through the middle, gets it up to the 29-yard line. You still get all the promos, though. I want you to realize that. I wondered why you weren't picking that up. <laughs> but I was just thinking here, sitting up, sitting here thinking about congratulating you. What, as over we, this replay? As, as, not over this replay, but as you take a look at Ernest Biner carrying the ball out to the 28-yard line on your engagement to Kathy Lee Johnson. Thank you, Al. I congratulate you, sir. Wonderful gal. I'm very happy about it, and hopefully she's happy. Says she is. Takes it out past the 32. There's probably a carnival cruise in your future, oh, I would assume. No, but there's a birthday tomorrow. Or, in fact, we both have the same birthday, and I'll be with her. And uh, once again, I'm so very happy about it. I can count on you being in Dallas, though, next week, right? You can count heavily on that. All right. But you can forget about the following week. I'm out of here, baby. <laughs> Second and six. Cleveland. 33-yard line. Minor the tailback. Max sets up as the fullback. And it's Biner. Close to a first down. Appears to be just shy. Well, they said they're going to move Biner around, and that's what Infanti is showing tonight. He lines him up as a tailback, as a fullback, and a split-back spot on a wing in the slot everywhere. He had an interesting uh, philosophy about it. I want to ask you about uh, Well, let's talk about baseball first. You're going to be there, right? That's Good Lord willing, <laughs> Monday night. <laughs> Dodgers Stadium. Rise. Right. <laughs> Mets against the Dodgers. Home uh, for you finally, huh? Monday night baseball. You've had a few stops. At least for an hour and a half, anyway. Have you met Linda lately? Not recently. Third down and one from the 37. Kozar. Kozar's in trouble. Lost it. it. Great touch. Another penalty flag as it's complete to Travis Tucker. And Tucker takes it all the way down to the 23. But you saw the flag in the shot. Down at the 44-yard line. But I think that's going to be against Miami. That was a great touch by Kozar. It really was. He was stuck back there in traffic. People all around him laid it up there beautifully. Holding number 19. Had to be. Decline. First down. Had great concentration by Tucker. Let's watch again. Now, look at the traffic he's in back there. He'll step back in, finds a little bit of a pocket. But I'll tell you, there's some hot breath on your neck right there, and he kept his cool, had the touch on it, put it up perfectly, and it had to be a perfectly timed pass because there's pretty good coverage on that, as you see Offerdahl, the rookie linebacker in there in pursuit. He's impressive. He really is. 39-yard pickup, and so the Browns have it at the 24-yard line. Penalty called on Renee Thompson, the rookie trying to win a job out of Baylor. 
Doesn't hurt that Kozar is also 6'5". He can look over a lot of people. Look out from the blind side as he gets the pass away, and it's incomplete at the 23-yard line. Hugh Green forcing the issue. Number 55 is Green, who came over from Tampa Bay last year, came from the outside, and again we have another penalty flag. This is what they want him to do to get him more into the pass rush. He was a great pass rusher at Tampa Bay. There was a flag on this play, but we're going to look at it again. They're holding Green, and that probably is the call as the Browns are being backed up. But that's what they would like to get out of Hugh Green. He was a great pass rusher when he came up in the same years with Lawrence Taylor. And I think he fell over Tampa Bay that he should have been given an opportunity to play a little little more into the pass rush than he was given. There is the holding right there. No question about it. But Hugh Green was very unhappy at Tampa Bay, and their report is that he is even paying off some of his contract for the opportunity to come here and play with the Dolphins. He could be an important factor in Shula's search for a little pressure on the passer. And the Dolphins really need it. First and 20, the penalty on Bolden as Kozar picks up most of that back as he gets it down to the 21-yard line to Brian Brennan, one of the starting wide receivers last year. Cleveland had to go out and try to find some wide receivers. That's one of the reasons they picked up Greer out of Canada and also Boyd as well. And they got Gerald McNeil now from the USFL, but Brennan and Weathers, who was hurt a good part of last year, were the wideouts. I like this offense, too. It's different. Last year, you would have seen a draw play, I'm quite sure. First down, long yardage, you'd try to get four or five out of it. Then they'd have run the ball again, then they'd have had to pass. This time, they got almost, they got about 13, 14 yards out of it, and now they're looking at a second and six. They have two downs to get it. So you balance it out, and it works a lot better. Inside give to Mack, who goes to the outside, drops the ball, but picks it up and runs out of bounds. He's living Close right. to the first down. He is. And the block thrown that time by Larry Williams, the backup guard, number 70. He got the bounce and also gets the first down. It was very close. They looked at it. He gets the block there by Williams, number 70. Steps inside. Good move to get to the outside. He did that to get behind the block of Kevin Mack. And if he hadn't have dropped the ball, he would have got down inside. Well, he might have even scored on it. And had the presence of mind to know how far he had to go for the first down as he picks it up and goes out of bounds at the 14-yard line. First down, Cleveland. Finer behind Mack. Takes it down to the 10. 6.29 to go. First half. Miami on top in a penalty-filled game. 7-3. to three. Browns have been penalized seven times for 45 yards. Go back to what I mentioned earlier. I talked to Marty Schottenheimer today about the effect on the 2,000-yard gainers, Mack and Biner, when you know that most of the time you're going to be in a single-back offense, although we haven't seen as much as I think we'll tonight as we'll see during the season. But he said, well, how many times have there been two backs that gained 1,000 yards? The big problem is most of them... If you have two great backs, one of them you're going to lose at least for a part of the season. You can't think that way, and he's not anymore. Second and six, and Kozar. Incomplete, intended for Ernest Biner. And the pressure that time from Glenn Blackwood, who came blitzing through. And furthermore, I'm sure that Marty Schottenheimer realizes he has a true talent in Bernie Kozar, and you're going to get the most out of him by letting him put the ball in the air, opening up the offense, letting the receivers work against the defense, and that's what he's going to attempt to do this year. It'll be a dramatically different offense for Cleveland than it was last year. Halftime, ABC News halftime report, and again, Herschel Walker, a live interview with the newest Cowboy. Third down and six from the 11. Miami's been bringing a blitz on this situation thus far in the game. Nothing they, doing this time. They rush four. Biner takes it, gets inside the 10, and is rolled down at the 7 by number 50, Jackie Ship. That's a good move by Ship to get to the outside. He was inside, took a step up, and then was able to pursue and make the tackle and uh, keep Cleveland short of the first down. They're tough on that left side of that Miami Dolphin defensive unit with Ship and Brzezinski. And Doug Betters, of course, missing. He's a holdout. Perhaps their best pass rusher who also works over that left side. Well, Von Schellman kicked the first field goal, but now they go back to the number one kicker, Matt Barr. 24-yard attempt, so a chip shot for Matt from the 14-yard line. And the report on Von Schellman is that he has a pulled muscle. Otherwise, he would have done the kicking, and Barr's kick is wide. I bet Von Schellman will get well rather quickly. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
He shanked the tip shot. Needs to change his grip. Oh, you don't miss that in regular season, are you? That's indisputable vis visual evidence right there. The Dolphins have been pass happy for the last few years, but tonight they put it up only four times. They've run the ball 11 times, 125 yards rushing, 87 of those on Hampton's run as Miami takes over with 534 to go in the half from the 20-yard line. Miami on top, 7-3, and here's Hampton again out to the 24-yard line. Felix Wright comes up to pop him, number 22. Hampton has been much of the offense as Marino has won a three for 13 yards, and neither Mark Duper or Clayton have caught a pass yet. Steelers have the lead over Washington tonight, 17-7 to in the second quarter. They also have Kellen Bryant, don't they? Mm, Washington, yep. And Seattle leads Detroit 10-7. Brian's going to make a major difference in that Washington offense. A truly great running back. Second and five from the 25. Fake to Hampton. Look at the time for Marino, per usual. And it's complete for a first down. Are they worried about that offensive line? Could have asked for more time than that. Great protection there. It's Clayton's first reception of the night. Time like that. For a quarterback like Marino, you couldn't stop anyone, much less this young man, Mark Clayton. Working hard against Harper, the cornerback that the Browns are taking a long look at tonight. First year man out of Alcorn State and just worked off the defensive man. Marino had all the time in the world and he got it there for the first. First and 10 from the 37 yard line. Now Marino throws his sixth pass of the night, and that's good for a gain of five. Lorenzo Hampton makes the catch, and Tom Fusino is in on the tackle. Marino looks over the sidelines, and signaling in the plays is Don Strzok, the backup quarterback. has been a great help to Marino. Look at the protection again. Foster, 61, bottom of your screen. Good pickup there on the blitzing play, Matthews. Marino again, lots of time, perfectly formed pocket. And I guess the problem Don Schub is concerned with, if he loses one more offensive lineman with the five already out with injuries, then what would he do? Second and five from the 42. Picked and it's off. picked off. Picked off by D.B. Hogard, number 48, and he is dropped. Near midfield. So the Browns pick it up on the turnover, and a man right there trying to win a job out of North Carolina State. Second, D.B. Hoggard. Second spectacular. Interception we've had. Chris Rockins did it earlier, and this is Clayton working to the inside. Actually, he was open. The ball was just thrown behind him. Bounced off his hand, and Hogger just happened to be in the right place at the right time as Marino was behind Clayton. Poorly thrown ball. Clayton was wide open between defenders. And so Marino, who's thrown the ball six times tonight, suffers his second interception. That's the Dolphins' third turnover. Cleveland has the ball. 3.30 to go in the half. Browns at the 49-yard line. Dolphins on top, 7-3. to three. Max straight ahead. Or Biner, rather. Biner takes it to the 44-yard line for a gain of five. Good crowd here tonight. Some 60,000. And what will happen a year from tomorrow is Dolphin Stadium will open. August 16th, 1987. I don't know what's going to happen to this venerable old place, but <laughs> it has seen a lot of action over the years. The Orange Bowl, some great games. Remember Thanksgiving Day '84, Doug Flutie, Bernie Kosar in that shootout, Flutie winning it with a hail mary right at the end of the game. That's just one of many. A second and five, Kosar has wow. Mac open. He has the first down, and Mac takes it to the 30-yard line, where he is stopped by Lyle Blackwood. Well, twice now they've been able to get that back around the corner with no one there. But a big gainer earlier that went about 60 yards. They brought it back because he had stepped out of bounds, but somebody is slipping the coverage over the left side. Did you ever play here? Never played here, no. Dolphins came in the existence, what, 67? And that was out of in 65. I've sweated enough times in this booth, however. First and ten from the 30-yard line. What out John Madden handles this booth. He runs through which wall. <laughs> it is tiny. He wouldn't even be able to get a run at it. He's got to work alone here. I know that. 
is a great one, Don Shulin. The great stat is that this man, in 23 years, has had one losing season. He's been to six Super Bowls in his career, three in a row at one time, 72 at the undefeated team, lost one in 73. He's just the best there is. Two minute warning. John Offerdahl, the rookie they are so very high on here in Miami, the starting inside linebacker on the right side from Western Michigan, second round draft pick, and he's looked good tonight. Two minutes to go in the half, second down, five, Cleveland at the Miami 25. Dolphins on top by four. Biner straight up the middle. Browns have all of their timeouts remaining. And it will be third down, about a yard and a half. Mention all the draft picks they gave up to get Bernie Kozar. They had to get Buffalo's first pick in a special draft a year ago. The Browns gave up two number ones. They gave up a third and a sixth round draft pick. They must have figured him for about 20 years. And they might get it. He's very young. Third and a long one. And Biner should have the first down. His progress took him past the 20-yard line. Offerdahl with the pop, number 56. Again, making his presence felt. What they like about this youngster is he is very bright, very cerebral young kid out of Western Michigan, but he's also a hitter. And you watch this pop right there, right in there, and he's taking on a pretty good-sized man, and he pins him right there, even though they give up the first down. That was a fine tackle. And, and he Cleveland. gets back in that pass coverage very well. He's a good athlete. Cleveland takes its first time out. It comes with 1.11 to go in the first half. And so the Browns showing you tonight, even though they put only three points on the board and nearly a complete half, the different offense, the different look they'll have, they'll put it up more. The thing to keep in mind, though, too, Frank, is you look at Gary Danielson, who's coming back from rotator cup surgery and has not played yet in preseason play. Danielson, who figures to be the backup quarterback, along with perhaps Pagel, will take a look at him in the second half in all likelihood. But the former Lion right there, not only serving as the alternate quarterback last year, but uh, also as a mentor, confidant, and a good buddy to Bernie Kosar. That's really why they brought him in from Detroit a year ago to kind of calm Bernie Kosar, who had a really living in a fishbowl all the glare of that publicity giving up his two years here in Miami and they brought in Gary Danielson who had all those years and many great years with Detroit to kind of look after him and they have become fast friends and he has been more than just a, a help physically for Kozar he's been a, a very strong emotional support for this youngster on first down from inside the 20 it is lofted to Mac and he barrels his way down to the 12 yard line as the clock runs down to 103, and Kozar takes another timeout. So the Browns have one remaining with a minute and three seconds to play in the first half. Don Shula with his Dolphins on top by a score of 7-3. to three. And it's Lyle Blackwood who is shaken up on the last play. A reminder coming up for you tomorrow from Atlantic City. A couple of lightweight fights. Meldrick Taylor, the 84 Olympic gold medalist, and Howard Davis, who was on the Olympic team back in 76. And then Pernell Whitaker, still unbeaten as a pro. Sweet Pea out of Norfolk, Virginia, taking on Raphael Williams on ABC's Wide World of Sports tomorrow. While Blackwood, in his 14th season at a TCU, again starting in place of the injured Bud Brown tonight at the age of 35, and the oldest defensive back in the league, hitting up. Played a lot of football over the years, and he came down here, what, four or five years ago from Baltimore, teamed up with his brother, and they they really gave the Dolphins some good years together. He really, I don't think, wanted to come back this year, Lyle Blackwood, and he was kind of talked into it. He's getting a little breather. Looks to be all right. He's been with Bengals, Seahawks, Jets, and wrapping up his career here in Miami. Second down three, Cleveland to the Miami 12. A strange time to call a timeout. I think they probably should have saved that, tried to pick up the first down, at least throw short for it, and stop the clock if they have an incompletion. Now they're down to one. They may have to use it for a field goal. Kozar off the fake. Kept an incomplete at the goal line. It was Travis Tucker. 
another well-thrown ball, and again, Kozar very cool. That ball should have been caught, and it should have stopped the clock down somewhere around the two-yard line. Let's look at it again. He had good blocking there by Biner, but he put this ball in there absolutely dead solid, perfect. It couldn't be any better, and that should have been caught, and the clock should have been stopped, and it couldn't have been a better effort on the part of Kozar. He just didn't have any help from his friend. Third and three from the 12, 57 seconds to go in the half. They keep it on the ground, and it's Biner fighting his way for the first down, taking it to the four. Now where they are in trouble is they have used that timeout. They have one remaining. They're going to have to hurry their offense. 40 seconds. It continues to move. He'll probably put it in the air and get the completion or stop the clock with the incompletion. He'll stop it with the incompletion. And <laughs> I'll tell you, that was very close for Greer. I think you might have been held a little bit there. Well, he, he, didn't make, he, he didn't make much of an effort for that ball. That was catchable. And there's also a flag down in the end zone, away from the play. Kozar is impressive. He threw that beautifully. Well, men on the field, on the defense, first down. That's a good way That's to win. Defense. That makes one of the best defenses you can get. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been picking up a lot of that on the, with the NFL replay toy they have down here to our left. Picked up a couple against Detroit last week. And it's not that uncommon when the offense is going without a huddle and you're playing in preseason. I wonder how many times you get a 12th man, even a 13th man, on a kickoff team. Can't do it anymore. That gives Cleveland the first down at the two-yard line, first and goal. Again, the Browns have one timeout remaining. Those are rolling. To the two yard line. Hey, baby, that's not his game. He had a man wide open in the end zone. He could have got it to him. And now they use their last timeout. And it'll be second down and goal at the two. Kozar, I don't know, he just kind of lost it there for a minute. Tucker was wide open in the end zone, and Kozar looked like a big crane down there trying to turn the corner. And in the time it took him, <laughs> the time it took him to get around the corner, the entire Dolphin team was right there with him. Browns spending their last time out with 24 seconds. I started to mention before, the thing you got to keep in mind, too, about Bernie Gozar is he's only 22 years old. And so even though he we does have some experience, he did help lead the team to a divisional title last year. He is still very young, still has a lot to learn. And among other things, learning a brand new offense this year. There's a lot of pressure on him, and of course... Like I said, he came out in that media fishbowl a year ago, but he's, there'll be a lot of chuckles. Can I tell you, when they go back and look at the movies of this tomorrow, the next day, the offensive team, they'll be all over him. And he'll get something, he'll get a nickname out of it. But he had Tucker so wide open. That was the quick six, about as easy a six as he was ever going to get. They'll ride him a little bit. He's a good kid, very bright kid. And not to mention, quite wealthy. I think he studied banking at the University of Miami, didn't he? Economics. Second and goal and no timeouts remaining. So Kozar's got to think about that in this play call from the two. Now you have time to run it and then get your field goal unit on, but you're better advised not to. He's under pressure, throwing incomplete, and again... It was Tucker, but this time under different circumstances. See, had they had that timeout that they really wasted a while ago, they could have run the football there. And they had to put the ball up. Miami felt that they had to put it up, and they got a lot of pressure from over the left side. Coming around the horn, Hugh Green. And I think we're going to see it much more of Hugh Green this year for the Dolphins defensive unit than we did from mid-season on a year ago when he came from Tampa Bay. Third down, goal from the two. Double tight end set up, and it's lofted for a touchdown into the arms of Ernest Biner. Good work by Kozar. Good safe pass play. And what's interesting in that situation is they lined up in a run formation with a double tight end and a wing back and two running backs. Yeah, the Dolphins knew they weren't going to run it, though. They had 
to put it in there. And they spring Biner with 14 seconds remaining in the half. And so Matt Barr, who missed an easy field goal earlier, out of Jeff Gosh's hole. And this one is perfect. So the Cleveland Browns have retaken the lead. They led 3-0 early after a blocked punt. Von Schaumann kicked the field goal and Hampton with an 87-yard run for Miami to account for the Dolphins scoring. And now the drive that culminates in the touchdown pass to Biner. Interesting, it was the Browns in the playoff. The Browns in the playoff game back in January. What was it, the 4th of January? They led 21 to 3 midway in the third quarter over the Miami Dolphins. They ultimately lost that game 24 to 21. Now they have a 14 to 7 lead. And also interesting, we're going to see these same two teams November the 10th. We'll see the Cleveland Browns two times. We have them also against Cincinnati in a schedule we think is absolutely terrific coming up. We're going to see the Miami Dolphins three times. We'll see them, as I mentioned, against Cleveland. Then we'll watch them against the Jets. That'll be a Donnie Brook and against New England. The Jets, of course, they were 11 and 5 a year ago, as was New England. The Dolphins winning it at 12 and 4. And that New England game is the final game of the season. The Mary Ho Ho will be here on what? The December the 22nd. Mm -hmm. It'll be the final regular season game for the Dolphins in this venerable old WPA project that was built in 1937. Well, we're seeing some great kicking tonight. Hampton. <laughs> Takes it out to the 29-yard line. I may warm up. That's right. The old triple threat. <laughs> We've got some kickers that are really trying hard. That's what happens. When you're pressing your kicker, you get in a lot of trouble. Again, the ABC News halftime report coming up. And Herschel Walker, who is home in New Jersey. We ought to get Tex Ram on there, too. He'd be wincing a little bit, wouldn't he? <laughs> got himself in an interesting situation down there with Tony Dorsett. Tony, I guess, retracted much of it. I understand it. I can't imagine how I would have felt as a player when all of a sudden you're the best running back you got on a football team and they bring in all universe. It has to hurt a little bit. And Tony Dorsett, great football player, a lot of pride. No question about the goodness of the Herschel Walker. Tough situation. It's going to be interesting to see how Tom Miami deals with it. Miami's going to run out the half as Davenport takes it up the middle line to the 39-yard line. And that's the end of a penalty fill. Field, the Cleveland Browns lead the Dolphins 10 to 7. Next Friday. We'll see him in the opener, I know. Oh, for sure. On the 8th of September. Halftime here, 10 7, Cleveland leading Miami. And this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Pontiac, America's road car company. Pontiac, we build excitement. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. 10 to 7 Browns as you look at Kozar, who'll start the second half, and we'll be back after this word and a message from your local station. Here we go now, the second half, commencing at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Cleveland on top, 10 to 7. Reggie Roby, the punter, now the kickoff man for Don Schuler, at least for the evening. Gets set to kick off in his straightaway style and angles it toward the far side where it is dropped at the two-yard line and brought back to the 10 to the 19 by Reggie Langhorn. And Bernie Kozar, who played the whole first half, will probably play the series or maybe two now in the second half. And then we figure to see some of Mike Pagel and some of Mike Norseth, the rookie, out of Kansas. Not bad numbers for Kozar. Very impressive on a couple of plays. Great touch. He was in traffic two or three times. Was able to get the completion. He's going to fit well into the new offense that uh, Marty Schottenheimer and Lindy and Fonty have planned this year. Has to. He just has great talent. Greg Allen, the sole running back in this set, he's in there for the first time tonight. The pass is taken out at the 30-yard line and enough for the first down on forward progress as Fontenot makes his first reception. Herman Fontenot out of LSU. Three turnovers by Miami. Look at the rushing yards versus the passing on the part of Miami. 25 yards for 
Marino in passing yardage. Not the hot hand. And that's, of course, with Clayton and Duper going all the way in the first half. He's not going to lose his job, though. I don't think so. <laughs> Playing in his option year, however. Seems to be no progress on that. First down from the 30, and it's complete to Fontenot, who saw a lot of action last week. Fontenot and Greg Allen saw a great deal of action. In fact, Fontenot caught nine passes in the exhibition game against the Buffalo Bills. Well, if they were all like that, he gained zero yardage. Still at the 30, it is second down and 10. Opening minute. Second half. Still looking to see a little more of Terry Greer, number 80, the outside receiver for Cleveland who came down from Canada and Browns acquired from the Rams. He has great talent also. Now here's Allen, last year's first round pick out of Florida State who was injured a good part of the season and carried the ball only eight times but saw a good deal of action last week and in fact scored the winning touchdown in the comeback against Buffalo. Was he something as a collegiate at Florida State? His freshman game, I believe it was, against LSU, the first time anyone ever heard it, he came in and ran for 202 yards, and he just tore things up at Florida State. Hurt his knee with Cleveland a year ago, arthroscopic surgery, and he has really been struggling. Third down and seven from the 33-yard line. Bozar looking for slaughter the second round draft choice and it's incomplete. They have high hopes for Webster Slaughter. We've been telling you a lot about Greer even though he hasn't been in much action tonight. But there is Webster Slaughter who comes out of San Diego State. Good coverage on Slaughter. Slaughter had some 87 receptions. That's William Judson, the right cornerback. Not bad coverage. It would have had to have been an absolutely perfectly thrown ball, and it was almost that. Kozar just missing off the fingertips. So Jeff Gossett comes in to punt on fourth down and seven. Line of scrimmage is the 32. Kevin Wyatt back deep, and it's Wyatt who takes it at the 25-yard line, looking for a block, and runs it back up to the 34. You know how noisy that is out there when that happens? When about nine guys collide from either side, hear it all the way up here, but if you're down there and you're small like Wyatt, it really is noisy. Jim Jensen, the versatile one, a man who plays on special teams. He's been a wide receiver. He's even lined up as a tight end on occasion and is trying to win a job as the third string quarterback. Win a job, uh, I say that loosely in the sense he's in his sixth year, but you know you've got Marino, and even though you're not going to see Don Strzok tonight, he's still going to be the backup. He's very and valuable. He's well. trying to be number three. He can do so many things. You saw his numbers uh, last week. They left out the two interceptions. One of them returned for a touchdown. He was not that impressive. They lost big to Minnesota. So from the 34-yard line, he turns and gives the ball off to Mark White. So we're not going to see the first unit backfield as we begin the second half. You've got Mark White. And Ricky Isom in the backfield. Last tackle made by Vince Osby, number 49. You're also going to see James Pruitt, who's number three. Rookie out of Cal State Fullerton, along with Vince Heflin as the wide receivers. The problem of being the backup quarterback behind somebody like Dan Marino, you start to look at everyone else, too, when you start to look at the new quarterback. The new quarterback turns around, sort of says, himself, who are all these people? They don't work with the best folks. Second and 12, it's dumped off to White, and he is bumped out of bounds at the 36-yard line. King Simmons running him out. Don Strzok, whose job is pretty much cemented at this point, the longtime backup quarterback here. He's had some great games over the years. He could come off the bench better than anyone I know. He, I think, has given up ever even thinking about starting. He gave it up many years ago, particularly when Marino came in and replaced Woodley three years ago. Don Strzok was a holdout for a year the next year, but he loves his role now, and he's been a great help to Dan Marino. They are fast friends. They play golf together all the time. They fish together. And as Danielson is the Kozar, Strzok has been to Marino. Out of the shotgun, Jensen. Penalty marker is down for a change. Lawrence Sampleton, the intended receiver. And we'll see what the call is from Fred Wyant of the gang. 
And you can tell by the clapping of Jensen that the penalty is, well, <laughs> Jensen was clapping. I assumed it was going to be against Cleveland, but illegal motion is the call, and it appears we now have offsetting penalties. Meanwhile, update you in baseball, cards and Mets won one in the eighth. 5-2 Montreal in the first game of a doubleheader. Second game delayed by rain. And Pittsburgh won the first from Philadelphia. 6-5 lead in the second, 1-0. Houston still rolling, and they picked up Danny Darwin from Milwaukee today. 3-0 in the seventh. Reds won over San Diego in the opener. Second game getting underway, and the Dodgers and the Giants will start shortly at Candlestick Park. Al, you were right. As we go ahead and look at them, you were right about the clapping because the double penalty, and the down will go over. Red Sox, who won... Three out of four from Detroit in Detroit. Now at home, leading 8-1. to one. Yankees tied with KC. Orioles have the lead. Toronto leads Texas in the fourth. Chicago a 3-0 lead over Milwaukee. And the other two games later, George Foster, by the way, has signed with the White Sox and has homered in that game. Jensen going deep and incomplete. And it may have been tipped away by Gross, intended for Pruitt. And another marker is down. This one back in the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion. Twice now, illegal motion. A moment ago, when you saw Jensen clapping his hands, there was also holding against the Cleveland, so that down was played over again. This one, however, is against the Dolphins. Motion. Illegal motion, number three. No Come wonder, on. no wonder What's it's so wide open. Yeah. <laughs> Threw it the whole play. Reggie Roby now to kick. Those are the penalties that have been accepted. Webster Slaughter is back to receive. A typical high Roby kick. This one not that deep, however. Yeah, but it's Slaughter who is covered at the 18-yard line. He gets up, but the play is dead. Whistle had blown, and Lawrence Sampleton made the tackle. And so the Browns take over with 11 minutes and 38 seconds to play in the third period. Cleveland 10, Miami 7. That graphically illustrates why the Browns, uh, among other reasons, changed offensive coordinators talking about changing the offense only in 1983 were they even in the middle of the pack otherwise for the last five years down toward the bottom in terms of points scored they've not scored that many tonight only 10 but they lead 10-7 as they take over for the first time in the third period and Kozar staying in the game giving it to Greg Allen the second series actually for the Browns here is it figures to be Kozar's last series. He played the whole first half and Schottenheimer wants to take a, a little more of a look at him, give him a little bit more experience and then we'll he probably go, see uh, Jeff Christensen and as I mentioned before uh, perhaps Mike Norseth. He might go with him a little longer, Al. He knows he's going to have to work him. It's a brand new offense for him. It's really what he does best. He puts the ball in the air a lot in this new offense. But he needs to work on it. He only has two more preseason games in which to work with receivers and it is totally different from last year. On uh, second down and eight. Kozar dropping it off at the 24-yard line. It's complete there to Herman Fontenot and a, another penalty marker. In fact, two of them thrown on the play. William Judson made the tackle. And holding is the call against the Browns. And the second call is illegal motion against the Browns for good measure. They've got it all going. It's been kind of a sloppy game. Flags all over tonight. Holding number 60. Second down. Jeff Wiska. Free agent signed A back in 84 out of Michigan State. Again, you understand it, though. The players still on the two-a-day drills. And nothing can be quite as exhausting. This game is strange. It starts in July and 100-degree temperature most everywhere for these teams. And it winds up in the ice and snow of January. But it is tough going right now, working out twice a day, sometimes two hours each workout. On second and 17, looking for Slaughter, and it's batted away at the last moment. Webster Slaughter covered on the play by William Judson. So there's Slaughter, the rookie, but he's going up against one of the better cornerbacks in the league and William Judson in his fifth season. Judson again, good protection. Kozar also just, just a little off, had it. You see him slow up just a little bit. Slaughter eased off a little bit. It's a ball he could have caught. 
another look at it, but you'll see as Slaughter slows up that the ball was just underthrown just a hair, but it's just almost impossible to throw that perfectly. It wasn't deflected, but the concentration certainly thrown off by a good play by William Judson. Third down and 17 from the 11-yard line. It's Allen. Not going very far and not fooling anybody. Donovan Rose, number 26, making the tackle. And on the other 26, Allen with 10-15 to go in the third quarter. And so the Browns will have to punt. Jeff Gossett to kick and back deep to receive is Kevin Wyatt, the rookie out of Arkansas. His father, John, was a major league pitcher. Yankees, Red Sox, Tigers. Some of the clubs he hurled for. Gossett. Picking from inside is five. Good Good high punt. kick. Taken at the 39 by Wyatt, who slips one tackle. Works his way to the outside. And is stopped at the 49-yard line. They like very much to find someone to return punts with Miami. They figure they're going to have... Lorenzo Hampton in the offensive set most of the game. They could use some help. Obviously, a few economic cutbacks here at the Orange Bowl. <laughs> Those blimps, little mini blimps blown up by former television executives. <laughs> Different sort of blimp shot. This is colorful, though, isn't it? Would you like to be that air traffic controller? Miami with the ball at the 49-yard line, first and 10. That's Pruitt in motion, and a whistle stops the play before its inception. How many penalties have we had tonight? Well, start Not any more two. than about 116. This is when you need a lot of color and a lot of philosophy. And a lot of pageantry. <laughs> Ronnie Lee. Those are the ones, again, accepted. They do not include those declined, and they have been numerous. And many of them have been multiplied. Mm -hmm. Video replay from the NFL is in place here. We have not used it tonight. They're out of tape. <laughs> First and 15 from the 45. White. Picks up about four, gets it out to the 48-yard line. Dolphins, we showed you what Cleveland's done for the past few years, and there are the Dolphins, and that's in the Marino era. Seventh in the league among the 28 teams, and then first in 84 when they went to the Super Bowl, and fourth last year. What do they say? Offense sells tickets, and defense wins championships. The old cliche. Defensive coordinators say that. Second and 11 from the 48. White into Brown's territory. And a run down at the 42-yard line by Felix Wright, trying to win a job in the defensive backfield. Hey, you watch these rookies, and here's a free agent out of Utah State, Mark White, in... I don't know, we kid around about this game, an exhibition game, but it means so much to them. They're trying to earn a job, and I mentioned earlier that each team has almost 90 players remaining on the rosters as we look at White again. They come out here, and they're giving it everything because, as I said during the Hall of Fame game, it is really a tough thing that happens to a kid who was a star in college or university, and all of a sudden he gets caught up in a cut, and they're going to cut about 30 players, both of these teams, between now and Tuesday. They've got to go home, and they've got to say to the family, they've got to say to wives, sweethearts, They've got to try and explain why they just couldn't cut it. It's a tough deal. Third down and inches, and that's Ricky Isom, a rookie out of North Carolina State, a 12th round pick, trying to pick it up. And you know, they're in there with other rookies trying to do the same thing. The timing is off. The game, obviously, has changed gears. It's getting a little sloppy because a lot of uh, no names are in there and a lot of people that won't even be here next week. Most certainly, it won't be here at the start of the season when the rosters go to 45. They're in there trying. They give it everything they have, but it, the gears have just changed. The game is slowed. It's a different game. Isom doesn't pick up the first. Miami will go for it, though, on fourth down. Fourth and inches at the 41-yard line. We're halfway through the third quarter. Browns on top, 10-7. to seven. And 
the first down is picked up by the tailback White. Hey, that's when you pop a big one, too, when you get all those defensive players up on the line of scrimmage in that short yardage defense. If you ever pop it good, you'll be in the end zone before they can even find you. And he just about broke that one all the way. Good looking cat, too. He, so you've got them all up there if you can split the gap, and that was just straight ahead blocking. He found a little opening. He also and, juggled the football, too. And good play by the defensive back coming up. He probably was thinking about that football, which he was juggling around with. Menifer had to put the hit on him. Menifer, rather. Three yard pickup this time. For the most part, you've got Cleveland's first unit offense in there, or defense, rather. And you know what they do, Al? They put Mark White in there. He knows he's on the spot. They've given him the ball now four times, and he knows he knows why he's in there. They're taking a look at him to see if he's going to be around another week. It's a, I'll tell you, it's, a, it's an emotionally draining thing that goes through these, through the minds of these young players trying to earn a job. In their minds, they're thinking this is the last opportunity I may ever have to play this game. It's next been all my life. On second and seven, Jensen pressured, hit as he threw, and incomplete, intended for Heflin, number 88. The pressure that time from the nose tackle, Bob Golick, a late signee, held out for a while, and tonight he gets to, at least in the first half, play against Dwight Stevenson, the most formidable man in the offensive line at the moment for Miami. Lightweight fights tomorrow coming up from Atlantic City. Meldrick Taylor and Howard Davis in one and Pernell Whitaker and Raphael Williams in the other. Both Taylor and Whitaker unbeaten as professionals. Two of the gold medalists from the 84 Olympic team tomorrow on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Third and seven. Out of the shotgun from the 35-yard line. Jensen. Trying to pick up the first down, hit hard at the 27, but he has it. A first down as Jensen found his receivers covered and was brought down by Skipper and Rockin. You'd rather have a, the 26. You'd rather have a Jensen doing that than a Moreno because a Jensen is a pretty good athlete, a good strong athlete, plays on the special teams, as we mentioned a moment ago. A good receiver has been in there on just about every occasion. Turns it back in. He has no concern about picking up the first down. He knew where he had to be, and he got it. He has played just about everywhere. He's thrown the ball well in the few times that he's had the opportunity to be in there. 1984, he had a big game in the preseason, 11 of 18, 186 yards. So they know they can use him if they have to as a quarterback, but he fits in in so many other places. Here's Isom, who fumbles the ball at the 24-yard line. Brown signaling they have it, but they're wrong. That's what you don't want to do if you're a rookie and you're trying to make a team coached by Don Shula. Well, you don't want to do that. You don't want to not pick up the first down, which was the case before when they gave it to him third and short yardage and you couldn't get it. There have been a lot of players that have not stuck around as Dolphins because they do not handle the football. Good shot. Hit there by Harry Skipper. He's a former USFLer. Got the ball with his helmet, but the Dolphins hang on. Miami at the Cleveland 23. Jensen throwing to White for a first down. Stopped at the 10. Mark White, he's the youngster, no question, that's on the spot here in the third quarter. And his heart is thumping and going through his head, probably the thoughts, I wonder if I'm doing good enough. And a lot of talent ahead of him. Tony Nathan, Lorenzo Hampton, Ron Davenport, Woody Bennett is hurt, not playing tonight. And it's hard to believe that Mark White's going to make this ball club, but there are a lot of coaches, a lot of scouts that are also watching, a lot of teams looking for running backs. And Mark White is thinking about all those things out there tonight. The rookie from Utah State. It's his opportunity in the spotlight at this moment. It's first and goal. They cannot pick up a first down with the nose of the ball on the strike with the 10-yard line as Ison picks up two. So it'll be second down and goal at the eight with 4.19 remaining in the third period. And it was another good move by Mark White. What, did you see number 33 ahead of Isom? He had a good block, turned his man outside. He hasn't done anything wrong, has Mark White thus far, but the question is always, has he done enough? It's tough. Tough to be a head coach and send for a player, tell him to bring his playbook and send him home. Tough time of year. Jensen, out of the end zone, intended.
in for Vince Heflin, number 88. So it'll be third down and goal. With Clayton and Duper, and of course Nat Moore, who's not playing tonight. Slight leg injury, nothing serious with Nat. Tough to get some playing time in if you're a wide receiver. And Heflin, a veteran in his fifth year out of Central State of Ohio. Been cut a couple times, cut last year, and they brought him back. He's a good athlete. They can use him on punt returns, kickoff returns, and he's looked awfully good in training camp. Third down and goal, and Jensen pressured, and is lucky that that wasn't picked off by Gross. Chris Rockins on the safety blitz, and it's fourth down. <laughs> Jensen just about lost to Uni. A lot of pressure, but it's still a ball you should not try to throw. That's just lack of playing time on the part of Jensen. It's also a penalty flag. Not in his face was Rockins, who's had a big night. Holding number 48. First down. Automatic first. Mm -hmm. Didi Holger, who picked the pass off in the first half, is the man caught holding, and so instead of it being fourth down for Miami, it's first down. First and goal at the four-yard line. Hey. The Dolphins have not played great football, but they can get it into the end zone and take the lead. Marino, of course, out of it. His number four take. Fumbled in the end zone. And the Browns have it. So White coughs it up. And Hanford Dixon comes up with the football. Fourth turnover for Miami and Don Shula, who had watched the young rookie from Utah State perform well, Mark White. Now watches him fumble, and Mark White, I can tell you, his heart is right in his throat. Hanford Dixon on the recovery, but Mark White, who had played well, just did not handle it. He was hit hard. Anthony Griggs is the man who forced it. Big hole. Fumbled into the end zone, and under the new rule, the ball will be brought back out to the three-yard line. It used to be a touchback and would have gone out to the 20, so you're seeing one of the new changes that will be in effect this year. And for Mark White, well, he'll have to wander through another cut period when the teams go down to 60 on Tuesday. Am I good enough? Or did I show enough that another team might be interested? It'll be a tough night for Mark White. 3.24 to go, third period. Brown's on top. 10 to 7, and Mike Norseth, the rookie from Kansas, is the new Cleveland quarterback. It's Fontenot out to the four-yard line for a gain of one. Again, the Cleveland quarterback situation, and you know you're going to see Kozar, who played the whole first half tonight, and has played thus far into the third period. You've got Danielson coming back from the injury, and then you've got Mike Pagel, who played a lot last week in the Buffalo game, who came over from Indianapolis. I think you just called him off. Seventh-round draft pick who's in there now out of Kansas. Has some great numbers out in Kansas, but when he went in the seventh round, that was kind of a tip-off. But he maybe isn't the hottest thing they've had around out there. Pagel had a, of course, was with Indianapolis before and played well for them when they had really some more personnel. Indianapolis, by the way, is really coming on in this Eastern Division of the AFC, but he played well last week. Danielson, they're going to keep around for Kozar. So I think you called him off, Al. And that's what we have on Monday night. It's the Mets running away with it in the National League East against the Dodgers, who have just lost three out of four to Houston. Oh, those Mets turning on the Big Apple. Mm -hmm. Get your playoff tickets. Third down and six. North set. Get on the end zone. And out to the four. Ooh. And trying to wrestle the ball away. Barnett. North has really kind of lost track of where he was. He just about gave up two points back there. So Jerome Foster comes off. It was Foster trying to wrestle it away from Norseth, who will never forget his professional debut. What a way to come in. You're trying to impress the coaches by beginning at your own two-yard line. Coming from the end zone, the seven, Jeff Gossett. Jeff Gossett to kick with Kevin Wyatt standing near midfield. Wyatt on the 50 with a minute and 38. 
Miami and should get it back. Good field position. They've turned it over four times tonight. The last one fumbling into the end zone. Browns, meanwhile, is still running around trying to get set well, to punt and never there. could. And the clock runs down. Offense. Well, they can't lose much half the distance. Yeah, but that's not where you want to lose it because you actually need that extra couple of yards. Well, you can't kick from your regular spread formation. You don't get the coverage downfield, and the ball should come down somewhere around the 45 or the 50-yard line. And because of the lack of coverage and the protection, they have to give Gossett. Now, he can't step out of the end zone, and that'll be a safety. But the Dolphins ought to get this ball back in good field position, and Wyatt ought to have an opportunity to run it back. Gets it away in a hurry. And it's taken at the 49 by Kevin Wyatt. He's to the 45 and dropped at the 41-yard line. Another flag down right at the line of scrimmage. 48-yard kick. 10-yard return. Illegal motion for a change. This will depend on whether Don Shula wants to look at his punt return team or whether he wants to get an offensive unit on to look at new players. That's the kind of situation we have in preseason. I think during a regular season game, under the conditions that he had, the Cleveland Browns locked up against their goal line that he would make them kick again. Well, especially because the, they'd move the ball to the one. Decline. But he figures he's got pretty good field position here anyway, so... I think in a regular season game, he'd make him kick it again. It was a good punt, as a matter of fact, by Gossett. He just wants to look at personnel. He doesn't want to waste the time. He wants to look at moves of new people in the next day or two and make his decisions on the cuts. Orange Bowl, Miami. Al Michaels and Frank Gifford with you. Preseason football, 10-7 Cleveland on top. A lot of penalties. A little bit of excitement in the game. Most of it provided by Lorenzo Hampton on an 87-yard run to account for all of the Miami scoring. And a fire drill with personnel now. And it's part of both ball clubs as they bring in a lot of different people. Staying on a quarterback. Jensen still in there, rolling to his right on first and 10 from the 42-yard line. And the pass is incomplete, intended for James Pruitt. We might see before the night is done a little bit of Jeff Wickersham, and we're talking about Norseth quarterbacking for Cleveland and what little chance he has to make the team. But about somebody like a Wickersham, you know you've got Moreno, of course, Strock already the backup. Jensen is a valuable man because he can do so many other things. And then Wickersham trying to win a job as the number three quarterback. I hope he got his degree. It's going to be tough to make this ball club, even though he is a fine athlete out of LSU. Don Strock, you know, is going to be there. Jensen is terrific on special teams. He can play an outside receiver. He'll be here, too. On second down, that's Jock Robinson, who, as a freshman, had a sensational day in the Rose Bowl for the University of Washington Huskies. And that was the highlight of his career. That's color, Al. <laughs> or philosophy, I'm not sure which. Lots of new folks down there on both sides. At the 34-yard line, third down and two, Miami. Jensen. Incomplete, intended for Dan Johnson. With 12 seconds down to play in the quarter. Third period. Dolphins with three good tight ends and Bruce Hardy and Dan Johnson and the other Joe Rose is injured so we haven't seen him tonight and Lawrence Sampleton trying to win a spot on the team. Rod Ravise is on for the field goal attempt. 52 yard attempt at the 42 yard line. Ravise out of Tennessee. He can reach it too Al. He's got an NCAA record for most kicks over 50 yards. Kicked the 51 yarder last week in the preseason game in Minnesota. It is long enough and it's good. He's as close as they come to be an automatic from 50. 51 yards. He's the reason that Uwe Von Schaumann moved on a year ago. They got him in the seventh round out of Tennessee. And he was spectacular last year, 22 of 27. His best field goal during the regular season was 49 yards. The playoffs against his very team Cleveland, he had one 51 yards. You get the feeling he's going to be around a while. Six seconds to play in the third quarter, and the game tied 10-10. And the uh, 
the specter of overtime. Boom. Stop heavy it. over our heads. Stop it. Marino's night is done. Overtime or no overtime. Marino was three of six, 29 yards, two interceptions. He was sacked once for five yards. And he played the entire entire first half with Duper and Clayton Anderson. And there is the young quarterback that we were talking about a moment ago out of LSU. That is Jeff Wickersham, a Jeff Brown draft pick, was a good athlete. Sort of a David Woodley type, as a matter of fact, that uh, Don Shula liked and drafted a few years ago in the eighth round. He went for Wickersham, Bill Arnsparger's quarterback of the past couple of years, in the tenth round. I guess we're going to see him. Right now, we'll take a look at Roby kicking off. Six seconds. There's Glenn Young top kickoff returner in the American Football Conference last year, averaging 26 yards a run back. And it's a line drive taken by Young at the four, picks it up at the five. And on the final play of the third quarter, comes back out to the 23-yard line. You get the strong feeling that that might be the end of Roby's career on the kickoff unit. One about 30 yards. He got one down to about the two, and he just knuckled one. 15 minutes to go, a 10-10 tie after three, and we'll be back after this from your local station. Billy Edwards, he's been around with us for a long time. Billy Edwards, he's going to be 75 years young very shortly, about two or three more days. He's the guy that says, let him go. Where's that big long sleeve with the yellow on. He brings that hand around now. That means the co commercial is over and you can go. He's already let them go. Great man. Great man. We've had a lot of fun with him over the years. Fourth quarter in Miami. Game time 10-10. And the Browns have it at their own 23-yard line. First and 10. Mike North set. Hands the ball off. Loose ball, but covered by the Browns. So they maintain possession after a pickup of one. It'll be second down and nine from the 24-yard line. Well, Herschel Walker, we had him at the half. He'll join the Cowboys tomorrow. And upper left, of course, you've got Jim Kelly, and his rights are owned by Buffalo. Kelvin Bryant, bottom left, has already signed with the Washington Redskins. And then there's Doug Flutie. Formerly of the Generals, or I suppose currently of the Generals as well, but his rights owned by the Rams, who don't appear to be very interested. Norseth going deep and overthrowing the intended receiver, Brian Brennan. The Rams, if you haven't noticed, have lost Dieter Brock for a month, month and a half with an injury, so Steve Bartkowski is their number one quarterback right now. And again, with Flutie's rights owned by L.A., the Rams have made no indication that they are interested in signing him. Well, Doug Flutie is what? Under their personal service contract to Donald Trump, uh, the generals. I'm sure that will be honored. Bright young man, got a, has a pretty nice little restaurant down, where's that, down on Southport? It'll be interesting to see what happens. I don't think there's any question that Kellen Bryant is going to make an immediate and a dramatic impact on the offense of the Washington Redskins. He's a great football player. Third and nine for the 24-yard line. Dorsett drops it off for Fontenot, who drops the football. And no indication yet. It is Cleveland. Again, it gets a little four. sloppy when you start bringing in combinations that have never been on the field together. They've never scrimmaged together in many cases. Let's look at it again. Norseth got it out there, all right. And right into Fontenot's hands. He coughs it up, and the ball is loose. And hustling back a Cleveland Brown named Norseth, the quarterback. When it looked like George Little was a lock to recover it, number 99. But he couldn't hold on. The Browns keep possession but have to punt. Gossett, good deep kick, fielded by Wyatt at the 28-yard line, out past the 35. 
and cannot turn the corner and is dropped at the 36-yard line. Eight-yard run back after a good punt by Gossett, 48 yards. And Miami with a score tied 10-10, taking over. You know, as you look at the stats from the third quarter, you get the feeling as you watch the Cleveland Browns, they are going to be a much better football team. They're going to get from Bernie Kosar what they anticipated they would get when they gave up those four draft picks, including two number ones. They're going to open up the offense. They're going to be tough in a division that is the weakest in football, Central Division of the AFC, with Houston at 5-11 and 11 a year ago. Cincinnati was 7-9 and nine and Pittsburgh was 7-9. and nine. The Browns won it at 8-8. Eight eight. Penalty walk away with it. As Wickersham hands off to Jacques Robinson. Holding against Miami. Of course, Cincinnati was coming strong at the end. Pittsburgh will be a bit of a threat, but this is a good-looking football team. Number 66. First down. And we'll take a look at Pittsburgh next week against Dallas. Our final preseason special for you. 8 o'clock Eastern time next Friday from Irving, Texas in the season premiere of Monday Night Football on the 8th of September. Giants-Cowboys. Wickersham, the LSU rookie, has a man wide open but overshoots him as Pruitt got free. He was hurried, young Jeff Wickersham. He really overthrew it. Here's Pruitt, another rookie trying to earn a job. He looked awfully good in a workout yesterday. Good move. Rickersham, however, about that time was, at, was looking at a Cleveland Brown defensive man right in his face. He had already thrown the football. Pretty good move by Pruitt on Harry Skipper. But to no avail, and it's second down. And 20 at the 25-yard line. Robinson. Not only was Robinson the MVP in the Rose Bowl as a freshman, he wound up uh, his college career as the MVP in the Orange Bowl by Coastal. Erratic career, though, for him. Still only 23. Trying to win a job. Again, we have a penalty marker. There is Jacques Robinson, the ball against Larry Lee. Don Chule has in there in his offensive line what's left of his offensive line because it has been decimated with injuries. I mentioned at the top of the show, John Geisler, offensive tackle out with a knee. Stan Clark is gone. Mark Dennard out with an ankle. Jeff Taves, an offensive guard, all from the offensive line, all injured. On third and 15, it's Davenport who takes it out to the 40-yard line. There has been talk down here, Al, too, that there have been talks with Eric Laxo, a longtime offensive tackle who retired last year. Ed Newman retired a year ago, and we understand that there have been contacts made by agents of management discussing the possibility that these two might come out of retirement. That's how short they are. Don Chula, of course, checking the waiver list, and he'll have a big waiver list between now and Tuesday, or Tuesday when it does come out. Somehow Shula and John Sandusky will find a way. Beautiful punt by Roby. That back lets to slaughter up inside his 10. He comes down to the 15 and is dropped at the 16-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Cleveland from the 16. 11.35 to go. We're tied 10-10 in Miami. 11 minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter at the Orange Bowl in Miami. 10 with Cleveland taking over at the 16-yard line, first and 10. Again, Bernie Kosar played the whole first half, as did Dan Marino. Now we're looking at Mike Norseth guiding his third series for the Browns. The rookie out of Kansas starts things from the 16-yard line. Fontenot. To the 21. We mentioned this is the last year that the Dolphins will play in this venerable stadium, and there is the new plant being built, about a 25 minute ride north of here. Dolphins Stadium, which not only will be the home of the Dolphins beginning next year, and they're scheduled to open with an exhibition game a year from tomorrow, 
against the Chicago Bears, but the Super Bowl will be held there in three years. It's been a long time dream of Joe Robbie, and he has had so much adversity in getting it on the board. No matter whether you agree or disagree, you have to admire his tenacity. He's getting it built. It's going to be a beautiful facility, and I can't see that it couldn't be anything but an added plus for the entire community, the entire South Florida area, because let's face it, this has a lot of history written here in the Orange Bowl, but it is not one of your finer stadiums around. And it's going to be a multi-purpose stadium as well, mm -hmm. as they're hoping of someday having Major League Baseball in Dolphin Stadium as well. Third down and one at the 25-yard line. Norseth set a lot of big eight records when he was out there in Kansas. Passed for almost 3,000 yards last year. It's Fontano who bails him out. Picks up the first down and a lot more breaking tackles. Good run as he takes it out to the 43-yard line. Flag is down once again. I think they might have been a little roughing against the quarterback. That is the call. A late hit on Norseth just as he released the ball to Fontenot, and it was a good move by Fontenot to get back to the inside. Let's take a look at it again. I mentioned that Norseth set a lot of records. Very cool customer. There it is. A little bit of extra effort on the part of number 97, Roy Harris. And the official was right on top of it. And typically, they're protecting the quarterback. And they will tack it on to the run by Fontenot. Another look at it. Watch number 97 coming in there again. That's Roy Harris. And a good shot to Fontenot. Watch him cut back now. Plants the right foot. Gets additional yardage. They tack on the penalty. Cleveland has the ball in Miami territory. At the Dolphin 42-yard line. Dorset trying to find Allen. And the ball is live at the 47-yard line and covered by the Browns. It was a lateral, so it was live, and there was a scramble for it. Here it is again. You'll see it parallels the line of scrimmage, and they are going to rule that it was a lateral and recovered. Actually, it was. You can see it. Good call. It is going actually backwards. So a good hustle on the part of the Cleveland Browns to come up with the ball. Bob Gruber, number 65, with a recovery. He's uh, just a new arrival of the Cleveland Browns. No gain, second down, 10. At the Miami 42. Complete to the 37-yard line to Fontenot, who's been all over the place, as he was last week. Fontenot knows all about Wickersham. The two of them played together at LSU. And a couple of pretty good running backs, including Dalton Hilliard and Gary James, part of that Tiger unit. Arbordal, again, the rookie linebacker from Miami, has played a lot of football tonight. He's still in there working. He made the stop on Fontenot. Third and five. Dorsett, before he gets blindsided, drops it off for Fontenot. He should move, and he takes it down to the 33, but appears to be just shy of the first. Good effort again by Norseth, Norseth to get that ball away. He had a lot of pressure. There was a full blitz on. Nobody picked up the defensive back coming from his left, he was able to read it and get the ball to Fontenot. Save a big loss. Fourth down and one Again, at the 33. So many of these players, the Fontenots and Norseth, they're playing for what is going to be revealed in the films or the videotapes that they now use in pro football that the coaches will be looking at over the next couple of days. They have to make the decision. 20, 25 players to be cut. And Norseth hopeful that he's not one of them, opts to take a timeout to discuss the upcoming fourth and one. I think people buy new cars for very personal reasons. Cleveland and Miami knotted up. 10-10, 7.56 to play fourth quarter. And it's fourth down and one for the Browns at the Miami 33-yard line after the timeout. Fontenot in motion. 
And Dorsett gives it to Allen, who slides his way forward for the first down. Greg Allen takes it inside the 30 to the 28-yard line to keep this drive alive. Number one draft pick, as I mentioned earlier, from Florida State. Knee problems a year ago, arthroscopic surgery. Last year, not much. Only played in the first seven games. We look at him again, but he's kind of on the spot here with the Cleveland Browns, even though he was a number one draft pick. Curtis Dickey, a great back for several years with Baltimore, where he took quite a pounding. He is not playing tonight, but he is on the Browns roster, number 33. So it's again a question of numbers with the 45-man roster. We know that Viner's going to stay. We know that Mac is going to stay. And we know that Fontenot is looking to throw the ball here. And does, puts it up, and it is tipped and nearly caught by Slaughter and nearly intercepted as well by Ricky Smith on the pass intended for Brian Brennan. Yeah, that's one he shouldn't have put up. If this play isn't there as a running back, you pull the ball down and take off and run the ball. Don't keep looking. You're not a quarterback. You weren't paid to do that. He had a man open, but he was off balance throwing back against the grain. Brian Brennan was open, but he had no chance to get it there. Second and ten, Cleveland at the Miami 26-yard line. 10-10 tie, 7 to go in the fourth. Fontenot doing everything. Going wide, catching passes, throwing, and running straight up the middle. Again, for the Cleveland Browns, Fontenot is in the spot exactly of that of Mark White. They are looking at him. They are checking him out. They'll check the films. They'll see if he blocked if he made all the right moves, if he did everything that he had to do. And even that might not be enough, as I mentioned earlier, with Biner for sure staying, a 1,000-yard gainer, Mack, Greg Allen, Curtis Dickey. And Montanel is just like the Miami Dolphins' Mark White. He's just hoping he's going to show enough to stick around at least for another week or so. Third down and four. Norseth. Improvises and picks up the first down as he gets to the 11-yard line. Stopped by George Little, number 99. So first and 10, Browns at the 11-yard line. Meanwhile, two other NFL preseason games. The Steelers leading Washington 24-17 in the fourth. And Seattle and Detroit also looking at a potential overtime. One of the games we have scheduled this year is a Washington Giant game up at Giant Stadium. That's always a Donnie Brook. We really have a good schedule coming up, Al. First and ten from the 11. Fontano, after a pickup of two, takes it to the nine. It'll be second down and eight. Now the AFC race will be interesting. As you mentioned, Frank, we've got the Dolphins against Cleveland and then here against the Jets and New England. Jets figure to be improved. New England, the defending AFC champions. Don Shulip, as we mentioned earlier, worried about the improving Indianapolis Colts. Gary Hogan at quarterback. What could happen is the Cleveland Browns could win fewer games than the team that winds up third in the AFC East, and as was the case last year, cement a spot in the playoffs, while the others are playing wild card games. Set. Throwing to Brennan, who makes the catch and goes out of bounds at the one-yard line. That's a well-thrown ball by Norseth. And handled by Brian Brennan, who has been the leading outside receiver for the Browns for the past couple of years. Makes a little move to the inside, and it has a good impact on, on Wyatt, the cornerback, number 41. And then Brennan... After he catches the ball, it steps out of bounds near the one-yard line. He knew where he was, handled it very well. Good move because they could pick up the first down, as that was graphically illustrated, and that's exactly what he gets. So it's first and goal, four chances to punch it in if needed. First and goal. Allen diving over. He didn't break the play. There's no, no signal yet. And, and he's not in. After they call the play in the huddle, I'm get, you've just got to believe that everyone, or at least North, is saying, let's hold on to this thing down here. They'll be tackling the ball, trying to get it out of there. Gets hit right there. Now the next man in will go right to the football. <laughs> and, of course, the 
replay apparatus of the NFL is on hand to determine whether or not they do break the plane. But as we illustrated earlier, sometimes even that doesn't work too well. Second and goal, and again, Norseth calls timeout, as he did. Oh, he's running out of time Preparatory to a fourth and one. He had four seconds on the 30-second clock, and he did the right thing. He wants to get this in. He doesn't want to have any problems down here. He doesn't want to bobble it, doesn't want a five-yard penalty, and then have to come away with the field goal. He did the right thing. It's been a long drive. It's consumed more than half the quarter. It started at the Cleveland 16-yard line. And Norseth leads him up on second down and goal from the one. Game time, 10-10, 4 one to play in the fourth. And it's Allen diving and getting in. And so Greg Allen caps the drive, the Florida State flash, by scoring the touchdown. And Allen, who scored the winning touchdown last week in the 1917 comeback win over the Bills, gives the Browns another lead. Good move. Follows Fontenot over the left side. No hole, takes off, flies over the top, misses a dolphin coming the other way, breaks the plane, and Greg Allen continues to impress, continuing to look for the spot, the number one draft pick of a year ago, who really never got off to any kind of a start a year ago because of a knee problem, played in only seven games, is still looking for a spot on this ball club. Again, Ernest Biner and Mack will be there for sure. Curtis Dickey has also yet to prove that he still has what he had for a few years at Baltimore. And then we watched Fontenot play well tonight. Let's take a look at Allen again over the top. Up and just missing. Meanwhile, of the National League, Cards and Mets won one in the tenth. Montreal won the first and two from Chicago. Lead in the second. Pirates beat the Phillies in the opener, and the Phillies lead 2-1 in the sixth inning of the nightcap. Houston has won again. They beat Atlanta 3-0. Cincinnati knocks off San Diego in game one. Second game, 4-0. Padres in the fourth, and the Dodgers and Giants are underway. Boston trying to hang on in the ninth now, leading Detroit 8-5. to five. The Yankees lead KC in the sixth inning, and Cleveland knocks off Baltimore 3-2. to two. Toronto leading Texas in the sixth. The White Sox, George Foster, the newest Chicagoan, hitting a home run in that one, 3-2. Oakland, California, Minnesota, Seattle underway. Would you repeat that? Absolutely. Oakland, Seattle. <laughs> Another major event in sports today. I want to talk about it just a moment if I could, Al. Young future Olympian debuting up in Fairfield County as Hampton. Wise move there. Down to the end zone. That ball hung up there high. I'm speaking, of course, of young seven-year-old Jacqueline Forty, who debuted in her competition as an equestrian up in Fairfield County in Connecticut. Came away a winner. And I'd also add that very proud Tricia Forty was there on hand. And who knows? The 2000 Olympics. Chad, of course, will still be in the booth. Right. In between interviews with every newspaper in the country over his daughter. She's adorable. At the 20 yard line, first and 10 for the Miami Dolphins on a reverse. It's Pruitt taking oh, it from Hampton. He gets out past the 25 to 30. He's to midfield, 31-yard run. Uh, when did they have a chance to work on that in training camp? You don't see that really in preseason, but they're taking a long look at Pruitt, fourth-round draft pick out of Cal State Fullerton. He has really looked good in camp. I was over there watching him yesterday. He's got some great moves as a receiver, and he has some good speed. Turns the corner. It's set up awfully well. He had to pop that back to the inside a little earlier. He might have got much more out of it. So Miami has it at the Cleveland 49. 3.08 to play. Wicker Sam going deep and nearly picked off. That's about the first one-on-one -on -one with a receiver and a defensive back tonight that we haven't got a flag on. Farmer, the intended receiver right there, and batted away by Mark Harper. Here's Farmer. And the defensive man is... Harper, good coverage. Second and ten at the 49. Wickersham throwing it.
it to the 38-yard line, but it's incomplete. Intended for Lawrence Sampleton. Tight end out of Texas. Sampleton played with Philadelphia a year ago, and he is big. He's 6'6", 240-pounder. Big target. That time he was open, and Wickersham just didn't have anything on the football. Threw off balance. Had no follow-through. He's just throwing flat-footed and didn't get the ball there. All of these things they are going to be looking at this week when they make those decisions as to who is to stay and who is to go. They cut to 60, and the ultimate roster will be 45 when they go into play on September the 7th. Third and 10. Looking for Pruitt, but it's out of bounds. Skip recovering on the play. And so it's fourth and 10 now. Wickersham, one out of five. And again, Marino's stats, not very impressive tonight. The Dolphins have been unable to do anything really through the air. And their offense pretty much uh, golden one fell swoop, the 87-yard run by Lorenzo Hampton. Webster Slaughter is deep and Reggie Roby to kick. I think the one thing that Shula has got to be pleased with tonight is Reggie Roby hangs about a high and not nearly as far as he'd like to have it travel was one thing that he was really impressed with had to be Lorenzo Hampton. And Lorenzo Hampton perhaps can give Tony Nathan a bit of a breather. Nathan has been the man they've always had to bring in there on a third down and long situation when they needed either the pass to draw or something special because Nathan could do it all. And he's Lorenzo, he Lorenzo also Hampton has proved that he can do the same kind of thing and, may, and also make the big play for them. Well, the two things Miami had to do is they needed to improve their running game, to get a little bit more balance into their offense. They needed to improve their defensive line and linebacking situation. The other thing that Schuler obviously is pleased with after the first two preseason games is Opperdahl, their top draft choice. That offensive line, however, Al, remains the specter that is hanging over their head. They have so many injuries. They have no one right now. They're going to have to get somebody. They can make do with it, maybe, but they can do will probably not get them a division title as it did a year ago. They were hurting last year, and they got through with a 12-4, and four, but it really surfaced against New England in that AFC Championship game, and they're going to have to get better defensive play. I'm talking again of the Miami Dolphins. A year ago, they were 23rd in the NFL defensively, 23rd against the rush, 22nd against the pass, and I think probably only a Don Shula could have got that team into the playoff, win a division, as they did, with that kind of, with those kinds of defensive numbers. Pittsburgh and Washington now looking at it over time as Seattle has taken the lead against the Lions. And what they also need is that pass rush, and I think they're going to look more to Hugh Green this year, doing a lot more stunning from the outside. Fontenot beating up some of the clock, staying in bounds. Clock down to 225, and the Browns do not even have to run a play prior to the two-minute warning. So Shula watched his team lose last week on the verge of losing tonight down by seven, and Cleveland has the ball. But during the regular season, you forget all about what happened in terms of the scores of preseason games anyway. And certainly the Raiders will be forgetting all about last week's performance against San Francisco, 32 to nothing. Scores in preseason games are really meaningless. I think the halftime score is more indicative of how the two teams compare to each other because that's when they usually play their real folks. After that, well, you never really know, and you can't really tell, and they're just looking at personnel and trying to decide on who they're going to keep after the next cut. Municipal bombs. Where we stand, we believe the serious... We'll have for you one week from tonight. The Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Cowboys in Dallas. Maybe we'll see Walker. We know we'll see him in uniform. And we also know we're going to see him September the 8th when we'll be down there for our debut of my 16th season, the Monday Night Football. And they'll be going against the Giants. Two minutes to go. It is second down and eight from the 23-yard line. Fontenot takes it out to the... 26 and Miami will utilize a timeout to stop the clock with 154. We're talking about how meaningless scores are in preseason. I just looked it up in 72 when the Dolphins had the perfect year, 17 and 0. They played six preseason games that year, three and three. And in fact, I read last week with the Raiders, the year they went to the Super Bowl back in 67, Super Bowl II, lost a preseason game, I believe, to Kansas City, something like 45-0. And what are we doing here? Yeah, exactly. Good question. Good question. 
Actually, I know yeah. one thing. We're going to miss Amy Smolens, a uh, member of our gang who is uh, finishing out her ABC career tonight, and we wish her all of the best. She's Indeed, terrific. Uh, what a great help she's been. What a talented, bright lady she is. Terrific. Norseth trying to get a job. Rookie from Kansas. I mentioned the big eight records that he set last year against Vanderbilt. He passed for 480 yards. He had almost 3,000 yards passing. Only two years at Kansas after coming out of junior college last year. Uh, again, nearly 3,000 yards and 15 touchdowns. And Don Shula, never too happy on the sidelines. Nobody works a game like Don Shula. Former defensive genius, really, in Baltimore before he became head coach there. He spends most of his time, I think, well, he splits it with the offense and defense. David Shula has a lot to do now with the offense of the Dolphins, but he's concerned about his offensive line. He's concerned about a defense that, quite frankly, is one of the weakest around. It's amazing the mileage he gets out of this football team because they are hurting in a lot of places. Third down and four from the 27-yard line. Bootleg Norseth looking for the first down and has it and slides to a stop at the 44-yard line to keep this drive going. The heady move by Norseth. Uh, he could have stepped out of bounds and avoided any possibility of taking a shot. He didn't, and he forces the Dolphins to use another timeout, and that should get them down to one. But he is not going to go out of bounds. He wanted to keep the clock moving. He gets the first down and stays in bounds. By the way, in a shot of the sideline a moment ago, there was sort of an indication that uh, Shula was thinking about sending Marino in for a little two-minute drill as Dan had his helmet on in that shot that we punched up of Shula just prior to that last play when it looked like uh, Miami was on the verge of maybe stopping this Cleveland drive. I but wouldn't think we would see at least, that. at least at the moment, it's academic. You let your number one gun cool off. I don't think you want to put him back in there. I wouldn't think so, but uh, odd time to put your helmet back on on the sideline. I think he just hangs around with it, so he doesn't <laughs> get in a casually thrown beer can or something. On an 86-degree night? Meanwhile, we can tell you this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Renault Jeep, where commitment to quality and innovation form a winning team. And by U.S. Sprint, where every fiber optic call will sound like you're right next door. And by Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Cereal. All those people. All of them. The whole gang. They have great judgment. First and ten from the 44-yard line. This is called hang on to the football, run out the clock. Which they'll have no problem doing after Miami spends its last time out. They have only one. And that's gone. That's it. And now a first down, and it'll be history, and it'll be back. And watch the video replays as what you did. For a lot of the players, it'll be the determining factors to whether their careers are over forever in this game. Many of them, perhaps, have an opportunity to be picked up by other ball clubs. Other scouts, coaches are looking on tonight. They've been watching the play of the Mark Whites, whom we talked about earlier, who probably is hoping that what he did tonight was good enough to keep him around, and if it wasn't good enough, running back, and rookie from Utah State, it might attract somebody else who would want him. Same holds true for many players, including Herman Fontenot, youngster out of LSU, trying to make this ball club of the Cleveland Browns. It's tough this time of year because these kids have been stars in high school, they've been stars in college, and for many of them, it's just one game away from being history. And back on the job market, we go back to families and try to explain you just weren't good enough to be with the best. And it's a tough no, time of the year. And the options are limited too now because in the past you could start thinking about, well, maybe I'll go play in the USFL if things don't work out. Second down and eight. Again, Miami can't call a timeout, so Cleveland can just sit on the football. Pick this little baby off. Take as much of the 30-second clock as they can, and that clock will start when the referee signals that the ball is ready for play. Marty Schottenheimer, who watched his team come from behind last week to beat Buffalo. He did his math well. He gets 30 seconds between plays. If he moves around just a little bit, this one will be history. The offense 
there, the new offensive coordinator, Lindy and Fati, who worked with Marty Schottenheimer on the Giants staff under Bill Arnsparger back in the late 70s. They're back together once again. He was the architect of the Cincinnati offense that went to the Super Bowl in 1981 and played a close game with the 49ers before losing. He had players like Chris Collinsworth and Isaac Curtis and Dan Ross there. And now he has Brian Brennan and Terry Greer as out wide receivers, side receivers, and of course the great Ozzie Newsom at the tight end, which will be so important to the type of offense he's trying to bring to the Cleveland Browns. I think it's going to be a much better Cleveland Brown team. I think they have a great shot of winning their division once again. They're going to be a much more exciting team to watch, and it's going to be fun for us because we have them twice this year, and they, quite frankly, were not too exciting last year. Well, to Kelly Hayes and to George Hill, our thanks for their work up here tonight. Schottenheimer and Shula getting together as the Cleveland Browns fly back with another victory. As the preseason mark is 2-0, and, and the Dolphins are 0-2. The final score, Browns 17, and the Dolphins 10. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.